tough to find a seat right now. 49,000 at sold out Cyclone Stadium in Ames. It's time to check the Reliance STS keys to victory for each team. Reliance STS, the seed, the herbicide, the system. Here's our analyst, Dave Huffman. Keith, one thing Iowa has to avoid, 12, penny, 10, 12 penalties last week against Northern Iowa cannot happen. Iowa overconfidence. They've got the streak going. Don't get too overconfident. Iowa State has to have a fast start. Don't be knocked out of this game by the end of the first half. Believe. Dan McCartney has this team believing from the bottom up. They're going to play with this team, and they're going to do well. Let's check the coin toss. It is on the rug, and it looks like the Cyclones have won the toss, and they defer to the second half. So Iowa State wins the toss and defers. The clones are coming out of the tunnel, and the kickoff is next. This isn't Dan McCartney's first Cyhawk game, but it's certainly his first on that sideline, and look at him. He's fired up. He has got his game face on. Tim, I think if he had any eligibility right now, he'd put a red hat on and get on that field. He is so excited, Keith. He is just, he is pumping players. Before the game, he was out hammering heads. He was taking names. He was talking to people. He was saying, guys, we can do this. He hasn't stopped talking since. Boy, he is fired up. Hayden Price, he's a little more laid back right now, isn't he? He's kind of smiling, having a good time. He's 13 and three against the Cyclones. Whatever approach he takes, it seems to be working. Iowa State will kick off. Hayden Fry has surely seen his share of first-time coaches, new games. He's seen a lot. The weather, Dave, is just absolutely perfect, isn't it? We had threats of showers earlier today. It's going to be a fair day. Wind will swirl in and out of this stadium all day long. For the temperature, you couldn't ask for anything else. It is an artificial turf field. It keeps with the clouds. We're going to have a nice, comfortable temperature down on the field, which is going to be advantageous to both sides of players. Jamie Cole will kick it off for the Cyclones. He's a true freshman with a very strong leg. He's been putting them in the end zone. We'll find out if he does it here to kick off against the Hawkeyes. So Dan McCarney wants to put his defense on the field, wants to see if they can shut down that powerful Hawkeye offense. And this is Tim Dwight. He's going to take it out of the end zone. Oh, and he is hammered at the 15-yard line by Greg Boyd. So a good start for the Cyclones. Let's check the starting lineups for today, brought to you by Norwest Loan Express. Need a loan? Call 1-800-2-NORWEST. The big offensive line. It's Quaker, Goff, Wigman, Purdy, and Verba. The backs and receivers. My goodness, they're an explosive set. Sherman, Shaw, Filer, Dwight, Slutsker's the tight end, and Demo Odoms will catch a lot of passes if Matt Sherman can find him open. And Matt Sherman from St. Ansgar, Iowa, grew up going to a lot of Cyclone games, but now he is the leader of the Hawkeyes. First and 10, ball on the 15, the give to Filer. Not much there. Sanders on the tackle. Let's set the Iowa State defense. Hudson, Strait, Moore, and Anderson the defensive secondary up front, Ruffalo, Poots, Schoen, Provenza coming off a strong game. Spikesma, Sanders, the leading tackler from last year, and he starts with a tackle here, and Michael Cooper. Second about six. Cedric Shaw. Didn't look like there was anything there, Dave, and he finds yards. Shaw is capable of not just getting the tough yards for you, Keith, but he can also get some breakaway yardage. This team has got some speed, something they've been worried about the last couple of years. Iowa State right now is going to try to build on a defensive stand they had last week against TCU, where they held TCU on a fourth and goal situation. They want to build that defense. It's third and short. Dan McCarney going to show his young lads the way to stop them again. A stop here would mean so much for Iowa State's defense. The give to Shaw. First down. Tackled by Hudson. He is the right cornerback. And I don't think we can say this enough. It is so important for the Cyclones to get through this first quarter without getting way behind on the scoreboard. Anybody who follows this series knows that Iowa State just seems to get way behind early. 
One of the things you also have to concentrate on is being over-enthusiastic. You want to be concise in your assignments. You want to make sure you know where you're going. It's Shaw wide on the pitch. He's hit hard, but he picked up a few yards. Michael Cooper, a former walk-on, brings the pads right into the chin strap. Nice. What? You're going to watch it on the right-hand side of your corner. I was coming around to the outside. But watch the filling linebackers. You get the gentleman pushing the ball down the line. Watch the secondary step up right here and just put the hammer on him. You're going to get some yardage on that, Iowa. But the ball carrier is also going to pay the price for coming up the corner. Dewan Anderson and Mike Linkovich, a couple of hard hitters for the Hawkeyes, showing it there. Shaw up and over near a first down. We got some laundry out on the field. See the yellow flag flying in. Usually when you see a flag like that, it's an indi indication of some holding somewhere back in the offensive line. You're it, speaking from experience there, aren't you? As an old ex-offensive <laughs> lineman, I have seen flags fly by me. Holding on the offense, second down after the penalty. Today's referee, Dick Hongnick, is going to be talking to us. Hopefully not a lot. Hayden Fry, remember last week, 12 penalties against Northern Iowa. Not happy, he told us yesterday. In no uncertain terms, this team has been told they will not have a repeat performance. Second down and about 12 for the Hawkeyes. We have yet to see a pass from Matt Sherman. It's been mostly Cedric Shaw. It's time to get to Filer. Bounces off a tackle and he's got some room. Filer. Very close to going all the way. Rudy Ruffalo lassoed him at the last second. Her filer had nothing but carpet in front of him. Some good running. We talked about enthusiasm just a couple of seconds ago. You look at that on a 20-yard run. You have to be fundamentally sound. You see the ball carrier right there stops. There's a potential tackle there, a tackle there, runs into his own guy, and then is finally brought downfield. The Keith, that's a dangerous play for the Iowa State defense. You've got to wrap up a guy. Hawkeyes nearing midfield. You're not going to bring Filer down with an arm tackle. Pitch to Shaw. He slipped down trying to make a cut. Mike Linkovich is there to greet him. And this AstroTurf, we were walking around yesterday. It's a little bit worn out. It's, it's a crummy field. I guess Hayden Fry put it succinctly when he said this is a worthless field. It is dangerous, and, and they're planning a new renovation here at Iowa State. They're going to have grass. They've got a new $10 million facility being built down in one end zone. There's a lot of improvements and upgrades coming to Cyclone Stadium. The Hawkeyes have so many weapons that Cedric Shaw is sometimes overlooked if a 1,000-yard runner can be overlooked. You hear about Banks and Dwight and Guy and Sherman, but Shaw is a terrific running back, and he shows it here. He's got a little daylight down to the 39-yard line. Anderson again on the stop. There are not many college teams that have a 1,000-yard rush here, and especially when you can pick up 16 on one key. Dan McCarty telling his guys, watch the cutback. Watch the way he takes the football. Stops at the line, not only shifts his body, but shifts the ball to the outside hand, protecting it, brings it back inside, and finally turns up field. Shaw, only the second sophomore at Iowa to gain 1,000 yards, the other being Tony Stewart. First and 10, and again the gift to Shaw, but Angelo Provenza with a big bang. Somebody didn't block him. This is a young team, but you watch the senior coming out of Aurora, Colorado. Angelo Provenza coming from his outside linebacker spot. Just a little setup, takes it. Dead center. That is form tackling. That's going to be on every highlight film you've got next year for Iowa State. Well, that's instructional video right there. <laughs> that isn't it? was nice. And you like to see that out of your seniors. Brings up second and 50, 15. The ball is on the 44. The pitch again to Shaw. He's getting a workout. Outside, cuts back in. Jason Poots brings him down with some help from Provenza. Already a couple times on this drive, the Cyclones have backed up the Hawkeyes with a good play, but then Iowa just comes back with a big gainer. Well, the Cyclones, at this point, you look and see there are not a lot of red shirts outside. you got some big heavy-legged uh, Hawkeyes running outside, carrying downfield. The other thing you're starting to see, Keith, is those secondary guys are starting to bite up a little bit. They're starting to come up to support the run, and this is when you start looking for that long pass downfield. This has been a long drive, and here's the big play. It's third and three. 
Sherman back to pass for the first time. He's looking for Odom's. Got him! They say he had his feet in bounds, and it's a first and goal for Iowa. Great catch by Odom's. Keith, we talked about the setup just a second ago, and here it is. You got your defensive backs coming forward, looking for a run on third and three. Odom's just turns a nice outside route, has to dive for the ball. It's a little thrown out. One foot comes down inside. The official throws his arms up and down, but gives him a first down inside the 10-yard line. Beautiful footwork by Odom's. That's not easy to stretch up, get vertical, and bring that foot back in. That was a great camera. Iowa calls a timeout. Sherman's going to talk it over. The Hawkeyes are driving to the goal line. Dan McCartney did not want this to happen. He did not want to see Iowa march down the field. And David, he's kind of getting in their faces here. He doesn't look like an individual who's are going to hold back his feelings at this point in the ball game. When you just have 9.40 gone or left in the first quarter, you don't want to give up easy touchdowns. You want to make them earn everything. Iowa, a very impressive drive coming down the field with only one pass, but a lot of rushing on the ground so far. Cedric Shaw has been the workhorse. He's had seven carries, 37 yards. And it's Shaw again, up and over, and he'll get off the ground and get the yards any way he can. He's all the way down about the four-yard line. Sanders with another stop for the Cyclones. This is a new Cyclone team, new uniforms, new logo, new coach. But clearly, they don't want to see Iowa get on the board with a touchdown right off because it's, it's, uh, it's hurt them in years past. No, you can see what uh, Iowa has also done when they get down inside that 20-yard line. Last, year, last week, four drives, four touchdowns. They're going to try to make it five in the red zone, and Shaw gets airborne again. He's darn close to the goal line. Cooper grabbed his shoulder pads and kept him from going over the plane, but this guy will not hesitate to get airborne. Well, Shaw is also a big guy. He's about six foot one. He's 195 pounds. And when he pulls his Edwin Moses routine like that, he's got a lot of stretch in him. You see a lot of small running backs sometimes try to get up over a, a pile. They can't do it. They're not tall enough. This kid's got length. He's got stride. He's got the capability of getting on the top, falling over to the end zone. He's not always flashy. Look at Hayden Fry. He was mad about wasting a timeout, apparently. Had to call a timeout. Something went wrong, and Fry's not happy about it. We'll come back. The Hawkeyes have the ball in the one-yard line. Fry lost his cool because it looked like the Hawkeyes lost their poise near the goal line. Well, they had the wrong personnel, and it looked like they were looking for a body. Aaron Granquist, who is a 6'4", 230 senior out of Osage, Iowa, was not in there. They had Dwight in the lineup instead, and they want some heavy bodies in there. Give Shaw the capability of, again, pushing it up over the top. Third down one. The give again to Shaw. He's outside. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Cedric Shaw earned that touchdown. There's a difference between jumping over the top and just waltzing around the corner. You should see the blocking he got on this. You look at Granquist, did have to come in for the backfield, goes in motion, a couple of nice down blocks, but watch Granville put the hit on the defensive back outside. Shaw just waltzes right into the end zone, unscathed. Well, Iowa does exactly what it wants to, takes the opening drive, takes a lot of time off the clock, and marches all the way down the field. And it's six to nothing. Brian Hurley will try to make it seven. And it's blocked. So a little bit of a moral victory for the Cyclones there. They did block the extra point. And that gets the crowd on its feet. Dan McCartney, he's still fired up. It's going to be fun to watch today. It's Iowa six, Iowa State zip. It's six to nothing Iowa after a six minute, 28 second drive. Drove 84 yards of field. Very impressive offensive drive. A little bit of daylight that time. Kevin Wilson runs it up to about the 35 yard line. 
Kevin Wilson did a phenomenal job getting the ball on a very short kick, picking it up and running it down the field. Keith, you were right. Very impressive, very, very impressive drive. One yard run by Shaw. But the thing that was critical in this last drive, look at the kick. It never reached above and actually hit a Cyclone defender in the top of the helmet as he was trying to push his way through. McCarty, very happy about that. A touchdown now puts him ahead. It didn't even look like a straight kick either. That was Brian Hurley on the kick and then Todd Romano kicking off for the Hawkeyes. We get our first look at Troy Davis and only about a yard or two. Let's check the starting lineups today for you. Brought to you by Norwest Loan Express. Need a loan? Dial 1-800-2-NORWEST. The offensive line for the Clones, Heights, Agafa, Scartfeet, uh, Kanapka, and Cohn. Glad you're saying that. <laughs> yeah. Backs and receivers is Doxon starting at quarterback. Davis, Guggenheim, DiBiase, Williams, and Harachik. And of course, Troy Davis has been the offense for Iowa State. He has 471 yards, second leading rusher in the nation. He actually has the most yards, but the other back has uh, only played one game. Doxon slips down and not the start Todd Doxon wanted. Jared DeVries, the big hoss, 6'4", 260-pound freshman from Applington, Iowa, takes advantage of the slip by Doxon. Well, Doxon has missed the last two games with an ankle sprain. He comes back, sets up on the turf, and his right foot just slips away. Todd Doxon has to put the ball in the air. The Hawkeyes right now, all they've got to do is key on 28, stay on him on TD all day long. The big kid here, the junior, has got to put the ball up in the air. The other TD is going to have to have some passing. It's third and 18, and this would look to be a passing situation, although you never know when Davis will get it. Doxon is passing. Receiver is open. Horacic with the reception, and the fans are on their feet. A completed pass. Nice-looking play by the Cyclones at third and 18, and they convert. And look at Doxon. He acts like that's what he wanted to do. He acts like that's exactly what he expected. Nice job. You got a three-man rush, from four-man rush from Iowa. He's got time. Doxon throws the ball right across the middle in his own defense. And the receiver just takes the ball, turns up field, finds some room, gets the first down. Excellent blocking on that play. Outstanding on a four-man rush. That was That's all the time in the world. Ball at midfield, first and ten, and now it's Davis. He only needs a little bit of room, and he will exploit it. Bobby Diaco with the first of what promises to be many tackles today. The defensive front for the Hawkeyes. It's Hilgenberg, DeVries, Bickham, Diaco, Rollins, LaFleur, and Innes Inge. Checking the backfield, Coates, Jackson, Robinson, and Atkins. All four of them are from the state of Texas. Hayden's got kind of an in down there, doesn't he? Hayden Fry has gone back to Texas. We talked about that yesterday, actually. To, uh, he said with the breakup of the Southwest Conference, kids are now looking to go everywhere. He can go back in and get the speed that he so desperately wants. Davis in the eye. Rodney Guggenheim up front doing blocking more than running. Davis. That was a handoff to Davis, and it looks like the... Cyclones are going to set up a little play action here. They're going to try to hope that Iowa is anticipating Davis, 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 and find some wide open receivers. This is the kind of thing where you have such a great rusher. You look, 35 rushes, 187 yards, no TDs. Last year, 1994, he's already blown so far by that that he's, he's just having a great future. Now you start looking for a couple of rollouts. McCartney has that pro offense where he's going to put one or two backs in the backfield. You start looking for some not, not rinky-dink plays, but some play-action pass. Davis with three carries and five yards. Doxon looking to pass again. The receiver is there. Can't quite hang on. Bivens, he, he got a hand on it, I believe, but it would have been a tough catch. Well, that's a tough throw. Doxon's coming out. People are in his face immediately. He's trying to roll out a little bit behind his tackle. Did not get to where he wanted to set up and therefore did not get a good follow-through. Bivens makes a good attempt at the ball. We get to see a fine punter here. Mark Harris, at this time in his career, he has the best overall average of any Cyclone in history at almost 43 yards of punt. Kind of angling over. This is one of his better ones. Kind of angled to the sidelines. Got a nice roll in the Cyclones. Have the Hawkeyes pinned. Good job by Harris. Tim Dwight, the explosive punt returner for the Hawkeyes, 
thought about returning the ball but decided to let it roll is that a good decision I, it is you're, if the ball supposedly the rule is you put your feet on the 10 yard line your heels on the 10 if it goes by you you're hoping the ball is going to roll out of the end zone something like that cyclones get a good roll get a nice snap there for dale rowley you gotta love a good snapper for a good punter matt sherman is perfect so far one for one didn't need to throw the ball that much on that first drive iowa has so many weapons you got Dwight and Odom's out wide right now. You got Shaw in the backfield. This time he stopped. And that's great. Michael Cooper standing him up. This is a nice time for the Cyclone defense to have a good stand. Coaches traditionally inside the 20-yard line get a little conservative. They want to get some space. They want to get some running room up the middle to get away from that end zone. And look at the collapse of the, of the Cyclone defense there. You got a lot of red shirts. You got Lacava coming up. You got a lot of bodies falling inside. The thing the Cyclones have to be careful with, though, they're seeing run after run after run, and Matt Sherman can pass the football, and he's got a couple of great receivers, several, in fact. He's dangerous. Second down and nine. And the Hawkeyes use up another timeout. They're burning them up in the first half. That's not what Hayden Fry wants to see. Dan McCarney, his defense giving a different look. And Sherman not liking it, saying, look, let's just take some time. Sherman and Fry are going to talk it over. Sherman did not have his best game last week. He, he still had what would be considered a good game for most people. But Sherman was, was just so terrific at the end of last season when they inserted him as the starter. He posted all kinds of big numbers, touchdowns, but not many interceptions. And last week he threw three interceptions and fans started asking if his elbow was okay and everything about uh, that performance. Well, fans, we're, as, as fans, I mean, we're always looking for the next underdog. We're always looking for the next kid coming up. Remember, Sherman's a sophomore. I mean, he's 3-0 and as a starter. He's got a lot to, uh, to learn. He also has some new backs that he has to work with. He's got some new receivers. The Hawkeyes have some new bodies in there. Actually, the Hawkeyes had eight new individuals starting last week in their starting lineups. So they've got a lot of new personnel that still have to work with each other. Iowa State has two games under their belt. Iowa currently has one. Second nine for Sherman. The Hawks are out of timeouts. The give again to Shaw. He bounces off that first hit so well and finds a few more yards. Linkovich. What a nice job by Straight coming up, though. Let's watch the replay. You see the linebackers. You see Straight coming down the line. He's playing off some bodies. Number 11 just sticks his head right inside there. Does an outstanding job. Matt Straight, a two-year letterman, also a senior, not afraid to put his body at that strong safety spot where it needs to be. No, he doesn't mind at all. He's out of Logan Magnolia, one of the captains on this Cyclone team. They give to Filer. They had him, but he bounced off. Now he's in the open. And it's Linkovich with the tackle again. And there was a missed opportunity for Iowa State's defense. They had Filer, but this is not a guy that you can stick an arm out and expect him to come down. He's big. He's strong. You need to go back to that instructional video they had just a couple of moments ago. You got an opportunity to wrap him up. Iowa State trying out here, and you're right, just a great open field tackle, grabbing on, hanging on for dear life, waiting for your other red shirts to come. But unfortunately, the sticks move forward for Iowa State. Iowa gets to move it down for a first down. First and 10, ball on the 19. Weiler's only carried a few times, but he's piled up the yardage. And we have another flag. That's our second. Like somebody got a little eager. May have been Slutsker, the tight end. And Hayden didn't like that either. Well, Hutz Stutzker is a senior. He's a three-year letterman. And you'd think Fire at that point... Snap. Both start on the offense. Five yards. Still first down. You look at Slutsker. Watch him on the left side, the top. He gets a little advantage. He gets a little start here. Unfortunately, nobody else from Iowa moved. In yeah. college football, the officials don't tell you which number it is, but uh, yeah, that's I guess our, we do. It's our job <laughs> yeah. to give you the bad, the good, and the ugly. That's and right. Folks, that was bad and ugly. Sherman with the pitch to Shaw. Shaw keeps finding room, and it's taken four or five people to bring him down. He did.
did get let loose of the football, but they call Shaw down. We focus so many times, Keith, on the on the skill people. Look at number 70 pulling around here. Casey Wiegman. Well, he's back over on the left-hand side there. Just keeps coming downfield looking for bodies. It's kind of like a big opening right there. He never stops looking to put a hat on somebody, knocking bodies down. You get the big kids running around out front. That really helps your backs. Shaw was pulling a plow of cyclones that time. He's not going down easily. Angelo Provenza. He's been in that backfield a couple of times. We had a chance to call Prevenza a couple of eight times. Look at the top of your screen here. You got the running back coming out right on top. Gets underneath inside angle. Prevenza just takes a nice tackle for her. That's an excellent, excellent single tackle. It's a good look at Prevenza out of Aurora, Colorado. And that, that's a couple of textbook tackles by Prevenza a couple of different ways. He's a tall kid, but he doesn't have a lot of lead in his pencil there at 207 pounds playing linebacker. Third and two, Sherman, straight drop back. He's in trouble, looks for receiver, doesn't find anybody, overthrows Slutzker, and the Cyclones make their first stand of the day. You can hear the crowd react. They very much like what they saw in that defensive stand. You're talking about field position all day long with a score just six to nothing. McCarney saying, good, give us the ball. It's a field position. We'll start working our offense now. And McCarney's saying, give us the crowd, too. He's been really encouraging the crowd to give us a home field advantage. Kevin Wilson calls for a fair catch about the 32-yard line, and it's good field position for the Cyclones. So Doxson will come back out and lead Iowa State. How rusty is he after missing two games? Is he behind everybody else? Absolutely is, no matter what you talk about trying to get practice. And, and they also kept him out of scrimmage this week. I mean, he ran some offense. He put some moves on a little bit. But when you move to a game speed, Keith, you're stepping it up two levels, three levels. He needs to get back into rhythm. We saw in the last pass play through where he didn't get set up as quickly as he wanted to. Action happens a lot quicker. Iowa State coming out, no huddle offense. McCarney trying a little bit of everything. Troy Davis, the single setback for Iowa State. Three receivers and a tight end. Doxson now calling an audible. Straight drop back. He's got Ed Williams in the flat. Williams trying to shake loose. He's still going. That's a first down. Ed Gibson had trouble bringing him down. Keith, this was an excellent, excellent offensive play. We got to the line of scrimmage. You heard him stand up and start calling off the routes. Doxson sits back, and let's watch the receiver here. See that, see that safety sneaking up? The receiver sees it, stops, grabs the ball quick, and then makes a nice move as he hustles his way up for a first down. That is great hustle. Look at Doxson. See the defensive back comes in, hustles the ball out to the right thing, and now you got one-on-one. -on -one. Great receivers make things happen, and Iowa State's got some more to build on here. Has Iowa State changed offenses this year? I guess so. Williams had 13 catches all of last year. He has nine already this season. <laughs> Davis looking for room. Bust through it. Bust around a tackler and gains about seven yards on the play, and that's what Davis does so well. He doesn't always break away, but the first couple of guys usually don't get him. You just take a routine play. Every college football team in America has this play in their offense. It's just a little toss to the left-hand side. He follows a fullback. He follows a blocking straight down down the field. But he dumps two or three people off. Picks up a nice seven. Not very tall at 5'8", but he's a very solid 185. Like many great running backs, just has those huge muscular thighs. And he will run over people and run around them. In the Raston Norris is in for Iowa State. Will Davis adjust some equipment? Norris. This is Norris with the ball looking for the first down, but a nice tackle by Ennis Inge. And a flag comes out late. That may have been a face mask. But well, we've got a bunch of Hawkeyes late. clapping their hands saying, yeah, that's what we need. Well, not the face mask, that personal foul maybe. Came yeah. out really late, late flag. You got the red shirts automatically walking back. We'll listen to the call. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense, 15 yards, the down counts, it's third down. 
Rod Bodholt is working the Cyclone sideline for us. Rod, what's getting the Cyclone offense on track? I'll tell you, Keith, I was listening in on the huddle as the Iowa State coaches were working with the offense, especially the line, saying, you guys got to get into the linebackers and get them off the ball. They're crowding the line of scrimmage. Something for you guys to watch. Can the Iowa State line get the linebackers off the ball? Thank you, Rod. We will look for that. Davis is by himself in the backfield. Doxson with the draw to Davis. There's a lot of room, and he is through it in a hurry. And Davis is gone. The 20, the 15, touchdown, Davis. to this crowd react. They've been waiting for how long for a big time back, a big time offense, and something positive to happen at this school, and they just saw it. He's had all kinds of attention, and he lives up to it in the big game. Davis explodes for 63 yards. Jamie Cole splits the uprights, and the crowd comes alive. The Cyclones are Seven to six. I can't remember the last time Iowa State led in this game. You got a seven-six ball game. Remember, Iowa kicked their extra point right into the helmet of the Iowa State Cyclones. Watch the play. Watch the right side of your screen. Look at the garden tackle. They set up for a draw play. They do a phenomenal job. Look at the great job 87 does in knocking the defensive lineman down. And now you've got a wide receiver downfield. That is a complete team play. Tony Davis is going to get the touchdown. This entire team made this work. Great block by 51 to shove out. Great job. The offensive line, as Rod said, getting to the linebackers and then downfield blocking. And Troy Davis with one of the best runs in college football this season. He was knocked by a couple of people. He is so strong and so fast. Hawkeye fans find out immediately what the Cyclone fans are so excited about. This guy is a game breaker. He already has more yards this season than any Cyclone back has had in the last four seasons. That young man should be allowed to celebrate for just a couple extra seconds because of that play. That was a great, great play. Troy Davis, 63-yard touchdown. Troy Davis now has the best three games of rushing in Iowa State history. He has put together the best back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games. And here's Tim Dwight. He's a game-breaker, too. And Dwight breaks the tackle. He's up to the 33. Let's check in with Mark Harmon on the Iowa sideline. And Mark, are the Hawkeyes a little stunned to be behind? Actually, Keith, I know the offense is kind of asking questions of themselves when they came off on the last play. Of course, using up their last timeout this early, Scott Slutsker yelled across to Hayden Fry, Coach, we got to get the sidelines to start paying attention. We can't afford this. And apparently, there's some kind of miscommunication going in when the signals are coming in. Let's see if they can get it back together on this next drive. Thank you, Mark. Maybe Iowa comes in a little bit overconfident in this game. We look at the scoring drive, 67 yards, and Davis with the big run. And that was set up by the passing that the Cyclones were able to do. First and 10 Hawkeyes. Sherman will pass. And he throws it to Willie Guy, and Dewan Anderson pops him as soon as the ball arrives. That's a ball you've got to catch. The ball's in the right spot at the right time. Anderson's going to get some credit. But Guy has the capability of putting his hands on that ball. See it coming right in. It's a little low, but that ball just comes right in out of his hands, Keith. Seems like Willie Guy has been playing for Iowa for about 10 years, but it hasn't been. <laughs> He's just been there a long time. 6'1", senior out of Memphis, Tennessee. Second down and 10. Ball on the 33. The pitch to Shaw. It's been working. And a whole gang of Cyclones. Pulls him down, but Shaw still gets about four yards on the play. We have reached the end of the first quarter. We talked many times about the Cyclones wanting to be in the game at the end of the first quarter. Not only are they in it, they're leading it. Must be some Cyclone fans rubbing their eyes right now in the Cyhawk series. It's been a long time since an Iowa State fan looked up at the board 
and saw Iowa State on top. But that is the case. It's seven to six, and that's just added a bunch of excitement to this game. And Dave, I, I don't think necessarily because you're a, you're a Cyclone fan, but even Hawkeye fans, it's just re-energized everything just to have Iowa State in the ball game. This game needs to be a rivalry. It needs to be exciting for both sides. And for a long, long time, Iowa has just dominated this 12 games in a row. Nobody's had any real interest in it. It's now a great time for everybody to keep this game going. The last time the Cyclones led was halftime in 1989. Been six years. Third down and six for Iowa. Sherman looks the pass. The Vens are charging hard. Sherman, nice pass across the middle to Willie Guy, who cradles it down around the 49-yard line. And Guy wishes he could have kept his feet. Let's go to Rod Bottle. What do you have for us on the Cyclone sideline? I tell you what, Murph, what does one play do for a team? Troy Davis just pumped about a million volts of electricity into this sideline. The fans are pumped, the players are pumped, and we have oranges on the field. This program's a long way from the Orange Bowl, but they're leading the Hawks, and that's party time over here. I don't, I don't know if we should make the reservations down to Miami I, just yet. Rod just ate that thing and had to get that in there somehow. Hey, didn't, nobody threw that. He just ate that for lunch. He, he brought that with him. First and ten, Sherman with the drop back again. He's looking deep, and on his heels, B.J. Spikesma. You know, the Cyclones are really coming at the quarterback hard, and Sherman, with that classic-style drop back, takes a while to get back there, and that gives your defensive lineman a little extra time. You look at the first sack of the game by B.J. Spikesma, but you also look at the rushing yards, the passing yards, time of possession for the Cyclones and the Hawkeyes. The Hawks came out that first drive and dominated. Time of possession, all these other things. The one statistic that counts, Keith, at the end of the game is the one on the end of the board. Save for the one run. The Hawkeyes have dominated this game. But Dan McCartney said, we, we can't match up with them personnel. we got to just find a way to win. This time it's Poots charging hard. Sherman unloads in the direction of Tim Dwight, but the Cyclones doing something they haven't done to an Iowa quarterback in a while, putting pressure on the quarterback. We, we were kind of wondering where the pressure was earlier. Watch the bottom of your screen. You're going to see Spikes come in underneath, and then Poots is going to roll around top, over the top, and you see him untouched. The Hawkeyes not only confusion in that goal line offense, but a confusion in the offensive line right now. Who do I pick up? Who am I picking on that stunt? You talk about starting to believe in yourself. These guys are starting to raise their level of play, not just energetically. They're playing smart, hard football. Third down, 14. Sherman, back to pass. Sherman. Great play by Linkovich. Linkovich comes flying in. I don't know if he got a hand on the ball, but that made the difference in that being an incompletion. Mike Linkovich has been all over the field. One of the things Dan McCarney told us yesterday was that the secondary, the first 10 minutes of practice is spent on stripping balls, knocking passes down, being aggressive in the secondary. You cannot be a successful defensive team if you are not aggressive. The punt by Nick Gallery is going to find the... Look at the play by Dwight! Tim Dwight comes flying in. Did he pull it off? The referees no. are having a discussion. No. Touchback. Tremendous hustle by the Iowa City native, Tim Dwight. Give, he does everything. Hey, give the kid an A. What a phenomenal job hustling downfield and trying to go after the football. Look at this. He dives in. But you've got the ball right here. The big kid takes it. He falls into the end zone with it. It's going to be a touchback. Tim Dwight is the total package. He catches the ball. He runs the ball. He returns punts. He can play defense if you need him to. He just loves football. Phil Hattie, the sports information director from Iowa, was telling last year in a game, one timeout came. The student managers were standing on the sideline. The trainers, nobody brought water out. Dwight went running over to the sideline, grabbed six or seven bottles, came running back to the defense. They turned around. He was giving water to everybody. He's selling programs at halftime. Doxson, he's a very good runner, but this time he just barely makes it back to the line of scrimmage. He was looking to pass. Doxson last year, the leading rusher for the Cyclones. 
not something you want out of your quarterback. You don't want to have a Bobby Douglas with all of the Bears standing back there rushing, especially when you've got a Troy Davis. They need Doxson to put the ball in the air. His advantage, however, is the capability of breaking away if he gets in trouble. He was a triple option quarterback for two years at Iowa State, now adjusting to the new pro set that McCarney uses. Second and 11. Doxson looking to pass again. He has Williams. And that's a Cyclone first down. Vernon Rollins. The highly touted freshman in on the tackle. And Ed Williams has found an open seam a couple of times. The thing that makes this play, Doxon, he's going back for a big five-step drop. Sees the rush, the, watch him step forward. He shuts his down. The receiver comes back in, finds that little open gap. That was both the receiver and the quarterback very well connected that play. First and ten, and now it's Davis and the Hawkeyes pulling down in the backfield. Ed Gibson, Hilgenberg also in on the stop. Good job of containing Davis. Gibson's a sophomore playing out in the cornerback spot. When you see that run, he immediately comes up in support. You like to see those guys coming up and helping you out on runs. Second down and 12. We talked to McCarney yesterday. We said, what do you need to make the passing game work? And he said, Todd Doxson. So far, Doxson has been sharp. Give to Davis, and the Hawkeyes pulling down again. They're making adjustments on defense, and Vernon Rollins brings it for Iowa. Well, that was supposed to be a trap play. Vernon Rollins read that very well from the backside. You get your big guard out front getting a block, but when you have a line, linebacker coming from the backside pulling you down, watch this. See the pulling guard coming over at number 60. He comes out, he gets a nice block out. Docks and Davis bump each other in the backfield, and that may have been just enough to allow Rollins to come to the backside. Nice play. Third down, 13. The Cyclones have been going backwards on this drive. Two receivers down on the bottom of your screen. Doxson with a straight drop back. He slips on the turf and goes down. And he may have hurt himself on that. Now he's going to pop right back up. Boy, this turf is tough on, on ankles and knees. Jared DeVries again charging hard for Iowa, the freshman from Applington. That's a momentum killer for the Cyclones. You feel like you did a great job the time before. Now you've got a couple things go wrong, but you want to keep the ball moving. Doxon falling down, no chance to make any kind of a play. This can always be exciting. Dwight is deep for the Hawkeyes. Nice punt by Harris. Dwight is going to try to run with it. He fumbles it. Dwight smothers it back up for Iowa. Well, there's some indication from Iowa State. Oh, we got a rugby scrum down here. Uh, the Cyclones think they have it. There's the official signal. The ball goes back to Iowa State. Iowa State recovers. And on a very unlikely occurrence, Tim Dwight fumbles a punt. Mike Hansen, I believe, had the recovery. This doesn't happen very often. Tim Dwight just running before he catches it. Keith, that was unbelievable. The ball went right through Dwight's hands. And then 86, look at you see him pulling his hands right down to the bottom. Great camera angle there. Great picture. 86 goes in, pulls the ball right out. Randy Shepard, or I'm sorry, Mike Hansen gets the ball. Tight end. He's a freshman from Omaha, Nebraska. Mike Hansen, I think he carried that ball off the field with him. He doesn't <laughs> want to give that up. The Cyclones have an opportunity. Ball on the 33, it's first and 10. Guggenheim and Davis, this is Davis with Guggenheim out front. There's nothing there. The Hawkeyes are making an adjustment on defense because Davis can't find any room. He busted that big 63-yarder for a touchdown. Ortlieb leads the charge. That time John Ortlieb out of Boca Raton, Florida. Your defensive coordinator literally has an easy time here. You tell your cornerbacks, you tell your outside linebackers, every time 28 swings outside, he's going to have the ball. We're going to focus on him. We're going to hit him at every opportunity. What Iowa State has to do now is take advantage of the short passing route and an outside rollout passing game. Inside 10 minutes to go. Davis slips, but it almost helped him because it delayed the defenders for a second, and then he scooted through in a hurry. More extracurricular activity. That gets the fans into it some more. 
Well, Mr. Robinson right there, Damian Robinson, thinking he's in the pros, going to pick up a fumble, run it all the way back. Keith, you can tell one thing right now that's been missing the last three, four, five years, the excitement in this stadium. Every single person is standing, they're cheering, they're clapping, they're looking around. There's a lot of excitement in today's game. Davis has nine carries for 73 yards, 63 of them on the big play. Third and 12, Doxson looking for Williams. from Plez Atkins. This Williams is showing me something in this game. He's running with the ball. He's leaping up and grabbing it. Plez Atkins, the defender on this, is going to have nightmares over this play. He's in perfect position. He's in front of the receiver. He's looking back on the ball. Williams goes over the top. That six foot one inch stretches over the top, grabs the ball. And I'll tell you what, Williams gets another five, six yards after that. He's done that every time they've thrown in the ball. He does not go down after the catch. Look at that. He grew two inches since I said he was six one. He's actually six three. He'll be six five by the third quarter. Three catches, 34 yards for Williams. First and 10. Diaco stops Davis at about the 10 yard line. Bobby Diaco. Just all kinds of electricity in this. Davis stadium. is Maybe sitting back field. about seven yards. One or two things are going to happen in those holes. You're either going to get some opening as he starts to move outside, or you're going to get a heads-up player like Diaco, who's going to be capable of playing down the line, reading his moves. If, if Davis doesn't get some splits immediately, those outside linebackers have a fair shot at him. Second down nine, ball on the ten. Docks into Davis, a little bit of a hole. Slides through, but credit the Hawkeyes. They pull him down in a hurry. That's not easy to do. In his inch, the defensive end for Iowa out of Kirkwood, Missouri. 6'5", 245, and he is a ball player. Look at number 60 out in front of you. You've got, you've got Kanapa coming out. He jumps on top of a linebacker, gives Davis that extra two or three feet. We focus so many times on the guys who get the ball. It's those big, heavy-legged boys up front to make it happen for everybody. He play third down and eight. The Cyclones can get a first down. They'd rather find the end zone. Iowa wants to keep them out. Doxson rolls. And it's batted around by two or three different people. Boy, this is why you do the tip drill in practice here. A play cannot be successful without other people. Watch Davis just stick his head up there and knock the Iowa defender right out of there. The ball thrown that time just a little bit high for Williams. Those are the kind of strikes you got the right person, you got the right time, you got to hit him right on rhythm. Atkins and Gibson both had a shot at the INT, but instead it's Jamie Cole, the true freshman, for a big field goal for the Cyclones. It's right through the uprights, and Iowa State builds on its lead. The Cyclones take advantage of a rare Tim Dwight mistake, and it's Iowa State 10, Iowa 6. It is time for the Pioneer Hybrid International Trivia Question. Today's question is, what was the score of the game the very first time Iowa State played Iowa? Think about that, and we'll give you the answer. Pioneer Hybrid International, where corn is going. The stadium is rocking. Jamie Cole is kicking, and that ball almost goes through the uprights. Whoa. That guy has a strong leg. Oh, oh. How many coaches are comfortable putting a true freshman on the field in such an important area? In kicking camp, Jamie Cole in those kickers camps that they hold to make people better kicked a 75 yarder. That's a kicking camp record. Let's go to Mark Harmon on the Iowa sideline where the Hawkeyes are in a position they're not used to. That's right, Keith. Uh, you know, if looks could kill, there'd be a lot of killing going on in the sideline right now. Not much being said outside of the basic coaches talking to their players on their respective squads. But right now, all these guys are doing is looking at each other and saying, how can this happen to us? What is going on? Let's get this thing corrected and let's start playing like the Hawkeyes guys are used to play. First and ten, Matt Sherman is the quarterback. He keeps it, nice ball fake. Sherman is thinking big. Dwight is downfield and a little bit of contact broken up. 
Linkovich was back there. I think Dewan Anderson also back. Underthrown by Sherman. So the Hawkeyes come out and go for the home run. What a great, great play fake that was by Sherman to get downfield. But look at this. Dwight's supposed to be free at that spot. He's got two bodies covering him. They are not biting. They are not going to be taken out. Dwight's standing there going, somebody throw a flag, make this all right. There was contact before the ball got there. Might have been one of those anybody's ball kind of contacts in the view of the official. Sherman drops back again. This time he's in trouble. He throws it out to Filer. Great play by Sherman. And Filer rumbles up to about the 25-yard line before Poots brings him down. And that's poised for a sophomore quarterback, isn't it? <laughs> I'll tell you, sometimes creativity helps as much as anything else. We're going to watch him drop back to pass. Filer's out there looking. Linebacker takes him outside, so he's just going to stand out there kind of in a pass route. Doesn't have anybody really to block, and all of a sudden he ends up with the ball, makes a nice heads-up play, turns the ball upfield, at least gives, keeps him alive, gives him a chance for a first down. And you can throw the ball forward, underhand, any way you want. Third down and four. The gift to Shaw. He stopped, but Shaw breaks out and spikes Monday. Pulls him down. Great second effort by Cedric Shaw. He was down. He did not have the first down. He was hit behind the first down. And that first hit rarely brings down Cedric Shaw. Oh, but what an opportunity missed for Iowa State. Watch the top of your screen coming down. That's Michael Cooper who's got an opportunity to wrap him up. Beats the block. And then Shaw just keeps his feet churning. Now you can see why he was a thousand yard rusher last year. He has a chance to be the all-time leading rusher at Iowa. In fact, barring injury, it would be hard for him not to become the Hawkeyes' all-time leading rusher. Sherman, he's thinking big again. Rashard Carter cannot hang on to it. Dewan Anderson is getting a workout deep for the Cyclones. Well, Keith, we're seeing a ball game that has now become wide open. This is not going to be your typical ground game. Sherman does such a phenomenal job on the play fake, hides the ball, and then airs it out. You've got to give the receiver time to get under it, give him a chance to catch it, places the ball perfectly. That needs to be a reception. Anderson and Linkovich both there for the Cyclones. You know, when the pass goes up, the Cyclones have had a couple of defenders there. Which is outstanding defense by the Cyclones. Second and ten. It's Shaw. Again, he breaks away from the first tackle. Still a good stop by the Cyclones. Greg Schoon coming in there, the sophomore out of Sioux, uh, uh, Sioux Rapids, Iowa, puts a great hit on him. We talked about those keys to the game at the start of the game. Iowa State, start fast. Keep your offense moving. Keep that defense up. Believe in what you're doing. Iowa talking about a little overconfidence, maybe. They're a little disjointed. And the penalties have come into play a couple of different times. Five minutes to go in the first half. It's third and ten at the 35. Tim Dwight is the lone setback for Iowa. He's running a pass pattern. Sherman dumps it to him. He's in the open field, and Tim Dwight has the first down. Sanders is the man on the stop, but Dwight can do so many things. you got to keep your eye on number six whenever he's out on the football field. Well, when you're playing a zone, as the Cyclones were at that time, you see the linebackers drop, see the defensive drop. They didn't want to give the big play up, but when you have a dangerous runner underneath, if he gets one-on-one -on -one with somebody, he can scurry enough. And you look at, he's 5'9". He's got the capability of digging through some holes that you normally don't want to give up. He's a perfect match for the Hawkeyes. He played at Iowa City High, led him to a state championship, broke all kinds of records, won state championships in track. His initials are TD, playing in his hometown. What a great story Tim Dwight is. Sherman, Demo Odoms with the catch. And Sherman is heating up. We talked about the quarterbacks at the top of the game having an integral part here. Sherman takes the ball, steps back. Here's for some experience count. He's looking left. He sets up to right. Doesn't see his first receiver. And now he turns back and he looks for a secondary receiver coming right across the middle of his zone. There's the opening and he drills it. 
Sherman had time to wave to family in the stands on that play. Great job by the offensive line. Shaw up the middle. He spins. Gets about four or five yards. That's a move you see Shaw do a lot. He'll just spin off that initial contact. But the thing I like about Cedric Shaw, you notice he's always moving forward. He's not a side to side. He's not an east to west runner. He's north and south, and he seems to always be moving forward, and the, the yards pile up, and just like now. It doesn't seem like Cedric Shaw has 82 yards already because they haven't always been flashy, but he gets five, six yards every time he touches it. That's what his height will do. He is a tall kid at six foot one inches. When he falls forward, he's going to fall forward that extra yard or two. The Hawkeyes have more depth than the Cyclones. They're just trying to wear them down. Sherman looking toward the end zone to Willie Guy, and that ball was thrown high. Sherman was hammered. Greg Schoen got there, got back in the backfield and hit him hard. We'll check it on the replay, and Sherman has been hit a few times. Well, the one thing, he's hit after the ball is thrown, and what you're worried about, look at all the time he's got here. The ball is gone. He keeps that ball down a little bit. That's a big reception downfield. The Cyclones are not getting that pressure on Sherman they had earlier in the first quarter. The Hawkeyes are 7 of 9 on third down conversion. That's, that's a great statistic. See if they do it again. Third and 6. The fake to Shaw. Sherman with a bullet to Sletzker and he's open and rumbling. He shakes off a tackler, dives for the end zone, and he's all the way down to about the one foot line. What a great catch and run by Slutsker. He was flirting with that sideline. If he wasn't out of bounds, he was certainly walking a tightrope. Well, here's the lack of pressure. You see a little roll out to the outside. Slutsker, a perfectly thrown ball. Oh, just out of the hands and out of the reach of Lukovic. And right here, look at Slutsker. Fights off the ball a little bit, keeps running down the sidelines. I think he stayed in. He's darn close. There was one foot there one time. It's very, very close. See, Great see job. Him, see him diving for the end zone, though? Slutsker could smell the goal line, and so can Rodney Filer. He is in the zone for the Hawkeyes. Keith, there's where poise comes into play. There's where people who have been there before. This team has had adversity the last couple years. They keep believing in themselves. The game's not over. So they blow that final whistle. The Cyclone lead disappears in one yard and a cloud of carpet dust. Filer in easily, and the Cyclones are behind 12 to 10 as Iowa really makes a statement on that drive. The Hawkeyes just overpowered Iowa State all the way down the field. Well, this is where Hayden Fry is also going to come out and say, we need to get that other point back. He moves the ball completely to the far hash. He's going to come out for a two-point conversion. The Hawkeyes will go for two. They want the four-point lead. Sherman with a quick pass. Thrown over the head of Slutsker. They were not on the same page. Slutsker was cutting in, and Sherman was thinking he was going to run the We also flag have pattern. a flag thrown on the play here after the fact. And we've got a lot of people pointing at uh, the Cyclones right now saying, wait a second, we're going to give you a second chance. Oh, we got a personal foul. Keith, you are so right on that call. That was a bad play. The try is no good. After the try, we have a dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. It'll be assessed on the kickoff. So the penalty was not a factor in the play itself, but Iowa State is probably going to have some bad field position. The Hawkeyes are on top. Well, the 10. The Cyclone sideline fired up. Greg Schoen is somewhere. He may be hiding after picking up a, a personal foul on that two-point conversion because uh, Dan McCartney was not happy. He had a conversation with him all the way to the sidelines. A couple other coaches came over, and then McCartney went over one more time to emphasize that if we're going to play, we're going to play well. Coaches will tell you that penalties, especially personal fouls, are a reflection on their coaching ability and on their coaching staff. Neither team wants that. So Todd Romano will kick it off and kick it way past the deep backs for Iowa State. So the Cyclones will have the ball on the 20. 
Let's check that scoring drive. An impressive one by Iowa as the Hawkeyes bounce right back and make a statement that there's a reason we've won this thing 12 years in a row. We have a better football team. That's the statement they're trying to make. 11 plays, 80 yards, 403 on the drive, and Filer runs it in after the great play by Sletzker to get it down near the goal line. So Iowa's, how will the Cyclones respond? Well, they've got a challenge. We saw Troy Davis take off for a 63-yard run. His next eight carries, however, were for three yards and less. So this Hawkeye defense is really closing in on him. Made some adjustments. It's Davis. He has some daylight. And he is so quick. Damian Robson, Robinson brings Davis down, but it's a Cyclone first down. So Davis responds with 11 quick yards. Davis... No, he's so fast, I think he's already running the next play. Davis is having a lot of success over the right side of the line. You got your right tackle and right guard out there opening some nice holes, getting to the linebacker. linebacker. First and 10, Davis goes wide. Shakes off a tackler, but we see the yellow flag on the play. Bobby Diaco in on the stop. Let's find out what the penalty is. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Let's check in with Mark on the Iowa sideline. Keith, the most common heard phrase after the scoring drive from the uh, Hawkeye side was, they're dying, they're dying. Apparently the Hawkeyes believe that the Cyclones uh, just can't stand up with them throughout a four-quarter game. Four quarters they were yelling. The same thing happened against UNI. They just kept on saying, we've got a game plan. We're bigger, faster, stronger. It's going to win out. Let's see what happens. Dave, Dan McCarney would not argue with any of that. He knows that the... The Hawkeyes have more depth. They probably have more talent. Illegal motion, Illegal motion on the offense. The offense five, yards, five yards, still first still down. down. So how do they avoid getting worn down? Because uh, Dan McCartney knows he can't match up with them. What do you do? Well, I, I will offer this, that I, I say Dan McCartney will stand face to face with anybody and say this team is as conditioned as anyone. This team is mentally prepared. They may not have all the physical tools yet, but they're not backing down from any part of this fight. No, they're not. First and 15. Diaco threatens the blitz. He pulls back, and Doxson finds Williams again. A quick strike, and Williams, that's what he's doing well. He is running with that ball after he catches it and adding four or five yards. There's not a coach in the country who will say, I don't want a receiver who just catches the ball. I want a receiver who's going to get those yards after the catch. It's a really important thing to have. This kid is a great target. I like the way he cradles the ball. I like the way he moves afterwards. See him put both hands on the ball. He's not going to take a chance of losing it. Opelaka, Florida. Good looking young receiver. Yeah, he does. He looks like he's got all the tools. Doxson looks again, this time across the middle, but Doxson had some pressure on him and could not get the ball to Hrachik, who was running a crossing pattern. You can, you can see the difference in a well-thrown ball and a poorly thrown poorly thrown ball. Doxson had absolutely no time to set up. He's throwing the ball back off his heels. He's rocked back. He's just trying to arm it all. There's no body, and it was underthrown. The former walk-on, Jeff St. Clair, did an outstanding job of, for the most part, playing mistake-free football for the first two games. But McCartney has said, we need Todd Doxson to beat the Hawkeyes. And Doxson has shown why McCartney has that faith in him. Quick strike to Horacek. And Chris Jackson is wrestling with him for possession. The official calls the ball down, and Jackson disagrees. Well, I'll tell you, Jackson, we got to give him a lot of credit, because when that ball came, Horacek had it, Jackson had it, and Jackson physically strips that ball out of his hands. Great play inside. The ball's out there, but watch Jackson. Watch Jackson take it. And the ball's down, ball's down on the carpet, so it's no catch for anybody. Great call by the officials and a terrific job. Uh, Randy Shelton, our director, Bob Helmers, our producer, bringing you some outstanding pictures. You could see exactly what happened on that play. It takes all the debate away. Mark Harris with a booming punt. Tim Dwight hangs on to this one, slips down on the turf. And the Cyclones again have the Hawkeyes pinned deep in their own territory. That AstroTurf is no fun. We're going to take a break. Got a good game at Cyclone Stadium. Back at Cyclone Stadium, sold out today. Nearly 50,000 people here seeing Iowa ahead of Iowa State, 12 to 10 in the second quarter. Minute 34 to play. 
This is what we were hoping for, a good game. Hayden Fry in his 17th year with Iowa. You think of all the great things he's done over the years, the great players that he has had. You look right now at Shaw, capable of becoming the number one leading rusher they have. Shaw, the ball carrier. Shaw finds more room, and right on cue, Cedric Shaw gains about 10 yards before Sanders forces him out of bounds. And out of bounds. Cedric okay. Shaw is, is just a terrific back. You know, Troy Davis has received most of the attention coming into this game, and that's unavoidable when a guy has 471 yards in two efforts. But Cedric Shaw is a all-Big Ten candidate tailback. He is just a workhorse. Give it to him. He gets it done. He doesn't make mistakes. He's a junior, so he's got this year and next year. You think of Nick Bell, who was a great runner for Iowa. You think of Ronnie Harmon. He's got the capability of passing these guys this season. Hawkeye fans are awfully excited about this 1995 team. Think this could be one that goes to a big bowl game. They've got all the weapons, and there's a big one. Set the shot for three or four more yards. by Ruffalo. Iowa also has a schedule that plays five teams this year that went to bowls last year, so they're going to improve themselves. They had eight starters a week ago play against Northern Iowa, who were brand new, all the way from Eric Hilgenberg, uh, who two years ago had such a severe knee injury, they thought he would never, ever come back, as you see the Iowa schedule. Some of the teams who have played, well, they've got to go to Ohio State this year, to Northwestern, which is a dominating team in the Big Ten this year. Well, every, free, every few years, Fry finds a way to get Iowa in the Rose Bowl, and some Hawkeye fans think that that could happen again this I year, and there's certainly right. enough talent out on that field to make it happen. We, Filer, big we, fullback. We have seen the Cyclones like up and down Andrew emotionally on that defensive line where they have played and they put a lot of pressure Fine on Sherman. All of a sudden, we're First seeing that Iowa, Iowa offensive line now 35. start to push people back a little bit and roll them over a little bit. Boy, Matt Sherman, that's what you want. That's what a pro quarterback does, throws it to several different people. And that's what Sherman doing, is doing here. And he certainly has the gifts. Great arm. And he's back to pass. Back to pass. Looking downfield, he is hit hard by Angelo Provenza. Provenza charging from that outside spot. And boy, he gets Sherman right under the helmet. Hit him hard. I tell you, this kid doesn't have a sandwich named after him at some sandwich shop. Something's terribly wrong. That is the end of the first half, and it ends with momentum for Iowa State. But the bottom line is the Hawkeyes are still on top. It's 12 to 10. Hayden Fry came out very at ease, smiling a lot, but we saw him get fired up a couple of times in that game. He kind of yelled at the troops a little. You see the swarm starting to take off the field for Iowa. One of the concerns Hayden Pratt actually did have yesterday was because of the locker room renovation here at Cyclone Stadium. They have a lot longer to go. Are they going to have enough time to do the corrections they need? Because it looks like Iowa's got a couple of corrections to make right today. Dan McCartney stops for some water. He's given his vocal cords a workout. It's been a great first half of football. A lot more to come. Second half ready to kick off in just a few moments. And Iowa State trails the Iowa Hawkeyes 12 to 10. One of the comments about Scott Slut Slutsker, three catches last week for 40 yards over Northern Iowa, 274 more receiving yards this year. He'll have 1,000 for a career. We look at the first half statistics, and the total yards kind of adds up to Iowa dominating the game on possession and actually grinding out the yards, but not that big of a difference in the score. Well, the big key came when uh, Dwight fumbled the football. All of a sudden, Iowa State has an opportunity to get some points, does a nice job. And you look at that first down difference, Iowa running the ball up and down the field, taking advantage of that, but penalties, both sides starting to play a factor. Something that's going to make Dan McCarney very happy, <clears throat> excuse me, first half, Iowa State did not turn the ball over. Iowa turned it over once. So now on the year, McCarney's team has taken it away six times and only given it up once. And that's something the Cyclones have been very weak at in, in years past. And they were 11th in the country coming in on turnover ratio. I don't know if you can see very well, but McCarney's got sweat dripping down his legs and in his sweatpants and stuff like that. And just this guy's in this game. 
And so are we. The second half and a booming kick by Todd Romano. And Davis just watches it bounce off the cheerleaders. Let's go down to Mark Harmon and see what the mood is of, as the Hawkeyes take the field for the second half. Guys, I talked to Hawkeye linebacker Vernon Rollins right before they went out on the field here, and I asked him, I said, you guys ready for this? And he says, yes. And I said, are they wearing down? He said, yes. Same word twice, but I guess the Hawkeyes feel they're going to wear them down, and I'm sure a few words from Hayden Fry at halftime is going to uh, also play a role in this uh, second half. Uh, that's the thing with Vernon Rollins. You just can't get him to shut up. <laughs> hey, he, he, lets his, he lets his play and do the talking for him. That guy can bring it. First and ten. Draw play to Davis, he's got room. About five yards, and if he had cut the other way, he probably would have seen a little more room. Ennis Inge is on top of the pile. This Ennis Inge, he's, a, well, he's the kind of guy you want on your side in battle. He's 6'5", 245, huge tattoo on his bicep. I'm telling you, I'd run the other way if I saw that guy. Yeah. That's like to be the person who put that on his arm, too. Probably about the size of a barn. <laughs> <laughs> he is big. Second down and five. Todd Doxson is the quarterback. Again, the give to Davis. And he breaks a couple tackles. Look at him drag the Hawkeyes with him. Cedric Shaw's been doing that. Now Davis drags a few with him. Diaco finally pulls him down. But Troy Davis, just five foot eight, but powerful legs. He just keeps them moving. You were told this back in midget football. Keep your legs driving. Keith, I'll tell you what, if the Hawkeyes are starting to think they're going to start wearing down the Cyclones right now, they're going to have to do a better job. Troy Davis now has gone over 101 yards and 14 carries. This kid's already done it. Third straight game, he's been over 100. He was almost at 300 for the Ohio game. He said he dreamed the night before the game he would rush for 300 yards. His dream was only off by nine. Ronnie Davis, and this time the Hawkeyes don't bite. George Bennett. Very nice job. Yeah, very nice job by Bennett. A lot of times, again, when Davis is back, and we've got some bodies down on the field here. We've got a big lineman down. Let's go to the replay before we find out what's going on in the field. Doxson takes the ball, just hands it, and the running back, the other back, number 42, misses the block on Bennett to the outside. And 42 is just kind of standing there. Bennett and Davis are both from Miami, so they've heard of each other, and I believe that is an offensive lineman trying to read a number there. 60, it's Mark Kanopka from Sterling Heights, Michigan. Oh, we hope he's okay. We'll take a break and come back to second and 10. Rod Bodhold on the Iowa State sideline. Cyclones trailing by two points. I think if you'd have told these guys at halftime, you're only going to be down two to a man. They'd have said, we'll take it. They want to be in it with a chance to win it in the fourth quarter. Let's see if Iowa State can stay with Iowa physically in the second half. They are in it. Thank you, Rod. And that's the big question. Can Iowa State stay with them? But as you said at the half, Dave, what they want to do, just keep the game close, and then it's anybody's game at the end. And I think people are starting to put a little more emphasis in saying, well, Iowa's just going to walk away with it physically. Iowa State's conditioned team. May not have the same level of athleticism, but they do have conditioning. Doxon, look at the move. You know, there's no gain on that, but what a great move. Tasmanian devil spin. Well, it was the first time we saw the naked bootleg. We got play action. Everybody moves to their left-hand side. Doxon spins out to his right. He has a receiver down to the white side. Can't quite get out there, then falls down. Left guard, number 60. Let's watch him watch his left leg down on the ground as he starts planning and coming by. The carrier is thrown down on it, and he rains it. They helped him walk off the field, and he looked like he got a little screen there. Third down and 10. Doxson in the pocket. The quick strike to Williams. He's open again. All the way down to the 39, and Ed Williams, he came to play today, didn't he? He strapped it on. It's amazing when you get a healthy quarterback who you know is going to lead your team. Everybody picks their game up a little bit. Look at Williams. The ball is thrown perfectly. He catches it in stride. He makes a move back to the inside. And here's your yards after the catch. He is just a good-looking receiver, isn't he? He's got the height. He's got the strength. He's 
got the hands. The last couple of years up in Minnesota, I've been doing a lot of work up there, and they've got a big kid named Jake Reed. Yeah. About 6'5". He's a player. And... Troy Davis uh, slammed down by George Bennett. Let's go to Mark Harmon for an injury update. Well, I tell you what, George Bennett, you mentioned his name. He's in there now because Eric Hilgenberg of the Hawkeyes came back from the halftime without his pads on. It looks like he's got a, a, a shoulder problem, so uh, he looks like he's through for the day. Along with backup tight end Derek Price and backup fullback Michael Berger, those three Hawkeyes came out without pads on, so it looks like their day is finished. Wow, a lot of injuries for the Hawkeyes. Eric you hear Hill. a lot about the AstroTurf. How much of a factor is that in injuries, Dave? You've played on it. I think part. statistically they have proven it. We'll talk about that after the play a little right. bit more. But there's some, there's some interesting comments on it. Second down and eight. Doxson play fake. The reverse to Horacek. He's on the corner. A lot of pressure ahead of him. All the way down to the 25. First down, Cyclones. We started to see misdirection, the Cyclone offense. Everybody focuses on Davis. You bring the man around back. Watch one block. How is one? And we didn't get to see the other corner block. Here, we're going to watch it coming in here. Everybody focuses on Davis. Horacek coming around the corner. There's one block. Watch the, oh, what a nice job of the guard coming out to the backside. Excellent job by Cohn with a block and Horacek. Putting the ball on the outside hand as he runs the sideline. Good looking play by the sidelines. Davis into the middle. It's a fumble. It's picked up. And Gibson gets into the 50. To the 40. He's got Doxson to beat. He cuts inside. Gibson all the way down to the 13 yard line. And Gibson. Wow, what a quick turn of events. And the Hawkeyes strike in a hurry. Every time Troy Davis has gotten his hands on the ball, there's one, two, three Hawkeyes on him. We've seen guys try to strip the ball. Watch as he comes right through the hole. He's popped by an off a defensive tackle. The ball goes into the air, down on the turf, picked up. The return, 67 yards. Ed Gibson just motoring. Nice run back. The Cyclone receivers never give up and keep charging. Gibson with a whole wall of people. Doxson can't make the tackle. Coming all the way for Iowa State from way back was Jerome Henry. First and 10 for the Hawkeyes. And well, Gibson's going to catch grief because he had a touchdown in his sights and he got caught from behind. And his teammates are going to give him a little bit of razzle-dazzle. <laughs> and we've got another body down on the field here. Very slow to get up and grabbing his knee, and you hate to see that. That's Aaron Quaker from Marengo, Iowa, and yeah, he is grabbing his he knee. Just, yeah, he's grabbing his knee on the left. We talked about the AstroTurf. This field in particular, in any AstroTurf field, I think statistically it's been proven that no more injuries are caused by AstroTurf. However, the recovery factor, you cannot recover. Any injury, any any soreness, any surgery, anything on AstroTurf takes it out of you four or five times longer. And this young man, they're playing up at his knee right now in that, uh, that cartilage area. When they roll you up that quick, that means it's it's not as serious. You're not looking at ACLs or anything like that. You're starting to look at a, he just got shaken up a little bit. Let's go to Rod Bothold, who I understand has a surprise injury update. Yeah, that's right, Keith. Three bad things happened to Iowa State on that play. The Davis fumbled, the long Hawkeye returned, and Iowa State quarterback Todd Dodson re-injured the left ankle trying to make the tackle on the play. They're working on him right now. No word on how bad it is, but he's limping on the sideline. Thank you, Rod. That is a killer for the Cyclones. Jeff St. Clair will come in, and I'm sure will do a fine job if he needs to. But Doxson has been the man for Iowa State. He has thrown some sharp passes, and of course, he's always a threat to run, but that ankle has been slow to heal. He's trying to shake it off. Back to the field, second and nine. Well, do we have Hayden Fry taking a page out of Dan McCarty's book? 
I think we're watching a lot of the same thing. And we've got another body down on the field rolling around. Watch the reverse. You see the ball handed off to the outside. Nice block on Cooper taking him out. But Lyatt's Lakai will come in here and do a nice job. And then we're going to get the downfield block. Not able to get around the corner. Good containment by the Cyclones. Linkovich slowed him down enough so that Anderson could push him out of bounds. Big play. It's third and nine. Hawkeyes by two. Ball on the 12. Sherman. Straight drop back out into the flat to Shaw. Shaw falls down and he's helped by Kevin Hudson and the Cyclones hold. And he is not a very happy puppy right now. Now, if he doesn't slip, he probably gets a few more yards. Yeah, it's a nice swing pass to the outside. You've got the ball in the right person's hands. We see it just a nice, easy swing out here. All of a sudden, lots of cyclone defenders coming out here. You're trying to get that big lineman out here. You've got to get him down farther and get him to knock 13 out and give Shaw an opportunity to come upfield. We're going to hear more about that AstroTurf from Hayden Fry when this is over. Ryan Driscoll holds for Brian Hurley. It'll be about a 29-yarder. Go good! Cyclone Stadium, find out who the quarterback is. Matt Sherman and the Hawkeyes lead 12 to 10. Sherman is on the Iowa sideline being taped, wearing the headsets for the Hawk, for the uh, Cyclones rather. Looks like Todd Doxson is back in the lineup. We check the turnovers and Iowa State doing a much better job this season with turnovers. Matt Sherman just having an ankle retape. Sometimes you get out in a ball game and they get slippery and they move around a lot. Just putting his ankle back together. Doxson hoping his ankle will stay together. I've seen a lot of injuries here at the start of the second half. Davis, oh, he is wrapped up and hit hard. Chris Jackson in on the stop for the Hawkeyes. Davis, we should say, is not a fumbler. He's not a guy that fumbles the ball. He's carried it about 100 times already this season. That was his first fumble of the season. That was an outstanding job by Iowa. you got to remember that they've got some good defensive players over on Iowa's side. They are also taught to go after the ball, pursue down the line of scrimmage. They're not going to give anything up. And while Iowa may seem like they're down right now, they're still up in this ball game by a score of 12 to 10. That's what counts in the end. And Doxson not noticeably limping. And it's Ed Williams. Williams flashes up on a slant pattern. He gets to about the 25-yard line. And I think Doxson has found his favorite receiver, number 81. These two look like they're going to have some big combinations over the course of the year. We'll watch Doxson at quarterback. He sets up. His ankles are looking good. Now, see the difference is he gets a nice setup. He follows through. He's going to get thrown to the ground, but he throws the ball on rhythm. That's exactly what you need out of your quarterback. And they expect to take a couple of hits in a ball game. Jared DeVries hit him, and we can't see him right now, but Ed Williams, who just caught the pass, now on the bottom of your screen, is limping badly after being caught from behind. We'll see if he can run a pass pattern effectively. Ball thrown beyond Dennis DiBiase. It was behind him a little bit. Diaco with the coverage. And the Cyclones are going to have to turn it over. It's three and out. Good job by the Hawkeye D. This Diaco's a player. He's a Butkus Award nominee. And he is all over the field making tackles, breaking up passes, pressuring the quarterback. You name it, Diaco will do it. Mark Harris has been having a fine day punting. This goes over to Willie Guy. He's got speed. Doesn't get a chance to use it there. Rodney Guggenheim, makes Rodney Guggenheim the fullback, also made the tackle. The Hawkeyes take over. They'll have the ball on about their own 37-yard line when we come back. Third quarter at Cyclone Stadium, Iowa 12, Iowa State 10. Let's go back and check the Pioneer Hybrid International Trivia question. Question was, what was the score of the game the very first time Iowa State played Iowa? Do I get to guess? Go ahead. Uh, I guess. Uh, you I guessed guess. wrong. <laughs> I guess. Uh, Iowa State 16, Iowa 8, back in 1894, 101 years ago. If you got that one right, you're a fan. Sherman, he's looking for a bunch. Demo Odom's wide open. He's still going all the way to the 32. Matt Straight wrestling. 
wrestles him down. That was a good looking play. All, all day long, Sherman has been over exaggerating. He, he's been taking, he's been play big. Watch this. He's going to sit here, rides that ball down on his hip. See him tuck it up, pull it away, looks down. And now he's got all the time in the world. And he finds Odom's downfield. Not even, nobody close to putting any pressure on him. Odom's finds the gap. That's a big, big pass play. Odom's was a little lonely on that play. He was wide open. And Sherman, he just looks like a pro style quarterback. Shaw has some room. There is a flag on the play. Shaw runs out of bounds about the 19 yard line. But we do have a flag back in the Iowa backfield. Let's go to Mark Harmon on the Iowa sideline. Mark, what do you have for us? Well, guys, obviously you can see Matt Sherman's back in the ball game. He did on that last drive uh, kind of limp on that third down play. He came off the bench and he went straight to the trainer's table where they looked at it. They felt around that ankle on the right foot. Uh, they taped him back up, though. He's back out there, so uh, obviously not that bad of an uh, injury, but it was some kind of pain he was feeling. Thank you, Mark. These are the kind of games, Keith, that kids are going to feel pain constantly. Unless you take me out, unless something's broken, I'm not coming out of the game. That was a holding call. Was a holding call. And I believe it was against Rodney Filer in the backfield. The give to Shaw. He's in the open. He's stuck hard, but he's all the way down to the 31-yard line. Provenza and Hudson Kevin team up Hudson. to smack him, but Shaw just keeps turning up the yards and, and the uh, PA announcer here had to give a warning to fans they throw anything else on the field it'll be a penalty on Iowa State for 15 yards. One of the dangers you've got to play in your linebackers so close to the line of scrimmage is if they get pounded like they did that last time the next body that's capable of stopping Shaw is your defensive secondary. You get a little separation of line linebacker Iowa's line is now starting to take over this ball game. Here comes Shaw. Shaw is getting it done and now he's staying on the turf. Well, we got a couple of bodies that time who are taking themselves down. Watch Shaw hit the outside corner. Speed, nice move back to the inside. Straight trying to grab him down around the top. His leg kind of buckled under him as he was tackled. Yep. Shaw does come out, but hey, that's no problem for the Hawkeyes. They just throw Tavian Banks in there. This guy averaged 7.3 yards of carry last year, and here's his first one today. And he slips and gets down to about the four-yard line. Tim Sanders around the stop for Iowa State. Le Coach? Yesterday in that meeting we had with Hayden Fry, he went on for quite a while about the AstroTurf and the condition of the field. Yeah. Uh, I imagine he's going to have a few things to say after this game. Well, the positive is, is, is uh, Gene Smith is the athletic director right. here, has been real Second instrumental. Ball, They're building some new athletic line. facilities down in the uh, north end zone. They're also going to put a grass field in here next year. So this is the last time you're going to see this series game on this turf. <laughs> Down. Well, the Iowa line has taken control of this ball game. There's nothing fancy about this. You move a nose guard, you pop a linebacker, the running back comes through, picks off a picks off a linebacker, and then Banks puts his head down, falls forward. This is as simple a football play as you can run. Very successful end. Nice to have depth like that, isn't it? Shaw goes out, Banks comes in. He did mention the sad fact is you can't keep these kids for six or seven years. If they get hurt, there's no uh, there's no injured reserve. You can pull them off of or no outside rosters. Romano will try the extra point now. Driscoll holding. It's 18 to 10. And that's missed too. The Hawkeyes are struggling with the kicking game. Hurley misses. Now Romano misses. And the Cyclones, can that's significant because Iowa State can tie the ball game with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Absolutely. And also, the other thing, you need to, all you need to do now is a touchdown and a field goal. If, you, if you've got time like we do, the ball's down nicely. 
There's no pressure on the kicker at all. The ball just sails wide right. He just missed it. Nothing wrong with the surface either. You know, we do want to get a point in here. Iowa State wants to rip this AstroTurf up as much as Iowa does. We don't want to imply that, that Hayden Fry is the only one that would like to see natural right. grass down here. Iowa State would love to have the grass. McCarney wants it. Gene Smith wants it. Uh, it's going to happen here. It's just this stuff is worn out right now. McCarney trying to rally the troops. You're still in it, I'm sure he's saying. We're still in it. It's 63-yard scoring drive for the Hawkeyes. Five plays. Took about two minutes off the clock, and Banks runs it in after Shaw goes out after being shaken up on a big carry. Well, this is also showing that Iowa does have some speed. I mean, they've taken a long drive, nine minutes in the first quarter. Now they can go 63 yards in two minutes. They can score quickly if necessary. Todd Romano will kick off. He's been booming a couple of these kickoffs. Romano kicking off. The wind is behind him. So this may go to Des Moines. Doesn't quite make it to Des Moines, but it hits the crossbar. Now look at that. He was he was actually closer to the crossbar on the kickoff than he was from 20 yards out. Now now figure that one out, would you? I can't. I can't. I just don't understand. I, you know, maybe they should just pee for K after a while. Is that, can you do that, college? That's, that's 75 yards to that crossbar. He hit that thing. He chunked that ball. Oh. The Cyclone offense rushes back onto the field. Todd Doxson, 7 for 11 for 111 yards. No interceptions. And the no huddle. Cyclones are going to try to... Catch Iowa's defense off guard, so it's to the no huddle, at least for this play. They give to Davis. He's in through the hole, and Chris Jackson hits him up high, and Diaco hits him down low, and Davis picks up about seven or eight yards. Davis and Shar both racking up some numbers. Watch your left guard, your right guard coming over. Nice job moving the guy out of the way, and then the filling back coming up, holding the, holding the uh, linebacker up. And the Davis just plays off both of those blocks so nicely. Aguafa, big lineman, 6'3", 330 pounds, number 65. And that's only if the scale goes to 335. Because <laughs> he's all of that. Nice tackle by Lloyd Beckham. He wraps up. Troy Davis brings him down immediately. It's harder than it looks, too. He's a big guy, too, 6'3", 270. Now the difference in here, he sits inside, somebody misses him, he just keeps penetrating, getting deeper, deeper into the backfield. He just keeps going after bodies. Third down and five. Very key play here for the Cyclones. Cyclones are four of 10 on third down conversions. Like to make it five of 11. Doxon finds his man. It's Garrett Gibbons. And that's a Cyclone first down. You know, that was a very nice, safe play. You get Troy Davis over to the right-hand side. You get a lot of people on him. You've got a one-on-one -on -one situation out to the left-hand side. And Bivens, what's he going to fall over as he walks off the field? Like he was going to trip there for a second. But it was a nice one-on-one, -on -one and it was a nice read by Doxon. Doxon's having a good game here, passing 8 of 13. He has not been a passing quarterback at Iowa State. He has been a runner. He was the leading rusher for the Cyclones a year ago. He won't be the leading rusher this year. Doxon, he's going to run this time. He's out to about the 44. That's near another Cyclone first down. Ed Gibson tripped him up. Well, they don't want Doxon running all the time. This kid has got the capability of breaking a big one. He gets a nice play action back pass. He freezes the linebackers. He sits outside of that. No pressure yet. Tucks the ball. Disappears downfield. And a first down. And that is a first down for the Cyclones. And Todd Doxson, he has not been running the ball a lot, but he certainly can. He's very capable. You know, it's got to be mentally nice for him knowing that he doesn't have to rush the ball all the time, that he doesn't have to, he can get out of trouble, but he doesn't have to be the man. Well, it should be better on him physically, too, once he shakes off that ankle injury. You know those can be pesky. Gibson stops Davis after a gain of another two or three. 
So Davis uh, has really been contained from the big play, except the big play. The, the big, big play. Yard, hey. Yeah. What's going to be interesting now, we've heard so much about Iowa saying we can wear them down and make this a physical game. If you see, the sun has now come out. There's shadows on the field. There's 3.36 left in the third quarter. Now the field's going to heat up. And the fourth quarter is going to be a lot different in field conditions than it was in the first half. Second down and six. Doxson is going to run it. Slides down to about the 47-yard line near another Cyclone first down. Vernon Rollins, Bobby Diaco contain him. That's about a yard away, and everybody that's on the Cyclone sideline looks to his ankle as soon as Doxson gets up. <laughs> well, he, cut, he, he sort of took off here. He didn't even try to look the ball downfield. Davis is trying to get a ball. He's slipping down. He can't get up to block anybody. And Todd's falling down all over the place. Third down and one. The give. Oh. Guggenheim, and I think he ran into a wall. A wall of Hawkeyes. Excellent defensive line play by the Hawkeyes. Those guys got down low. They penetrated. There was absolutely no room. I'll tell you what, you hear the crowd. They're chanting go. What hey, do you do? I'll tell you what. I'm sitting up in the booth. It's easy for me. I say go for it. Doxon is... Giving him about a, what would you say that was, about a foot and a half or two feet? Oh, they got, they got, they got a full yard to go here for this one. The quarterback always kind of shrinks down the distance. The quarterback wants to go for it. They've got a full yard here. They've got an open field. Keith, you put your big boys against their big boys, and you put your head and start grunting. Offensive line of the Cyclones has to get off the ball, and we're going to call a timeout. Timeout called by McCarney. Well, you could punt it and get it down to, say, the 20-yard line or maybe hope to pin them inside the 20, but I guess this is McCarney saying we're going to try to win this football game. Hey, as an offensive lineman and an offensive player, you like this. My whole job is predicated on, on being an earth mover. What I've got now is I've got a head coach who's got confidence in me who says, guys, this game is on the line at this play in the third quarter. We need to move people forward. If we don't get this, we're not out of the game, but we're going to give Iowa better field position. You better be able to move people when you're playing Oklahoma and at Kansas and Colorado's loaded up. Then you go to Nebraska, Kansas State, at Missouri. I don't, I don't see a whole lot of breathers on that schedule. Iowa State is going to have to be able to convert fourth and ones. You got four new coaches in the Big Eight this year, including here at Iowa State. You've got one down at Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and then Colorado reloads. Rick Neuheisel down there, Bob Simmons at Oklahoma State. Howard Stellenberger, we talked about him a little bit yesterday, and he kind of just resurfaces and rebuilds programs. And Big Eight going to become a lot more competitive over the next couple of years, not just the big one, big two anymore. Dave, would you give any thought to faking it and going for the big score here? I, I like the fact that if I've got Troy Davis right now, I can put the ball in his hands, I can hit a tackle gap, I can hit a tackle tight end gap, and I'm going to get my first down. Fourth and one, biggest play of the ball game. Davis, it's going to be close. I'm not sure he got it. Plez Atkins came up and hit Davis on the legs. I think they're going to measure it. This is a great defensive surge by oh, the there, Hawkeyes. There is no need to even measure that ball. He's still a yard away. Here's McCarney reacting to the play. They had the right play. They had the right personnel at the right time. They just did not execute it well enough to get it done. Yeah, I think he's uh, going to be quite a bit short. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a good yard short, not even close. Great stand by the Hawkeyes. That gives them all kinds of confidence on defense. Like you said, each team lined up. And I like Iowa the play. They're at the right spot. Davis has got the ball outside, but all of a sudden he's got three untouched bodies on him, and he swings it outside a little bit. We didn't have a body get in the corner out there and at least giving him a one-on-one -on -one shot. Les Atkins... 
with the big play. He had some help, though. Chris Jackson also helping out. And tell you, that was a great defensive stand by Iowa. And now it's great field position That's for sure Iowa. Shaw. I think uh, McCartney learned something from Fry, and that's when the uh, defense goes after the ball carrier, try to strip that ball. You can see Cyclones flying at it, trying to knock it loose, trying to strip it. Shaw having a great day. 24 carries, 143 yards. He earns him the hard way. He earns him the easy way. He'll catch the ball. He'll run the ball. Just a great addition to any offense. Just a junior. Second down seven, Sherman to Shaw again. And he keeps racking up the yards. Matt Strait runs him out of bounds, but it's gonna be a, a third and about three or four for the Hawkeyes. Shaw, he looks like a guy we might see in the pros playing someday. We'll keep him here for a couple more years, though, right? <laughs> Let these college fans enjoy what they see. He is absolutely outstanding. 25 carries. He can obviously be your workhorse. Talk about a workhorse for Iowa State, however. You got straight out there with 11 straight tackles. Shaw gives it the thumbs up for third and four. It's a fake. Sherman looking across the middle. He's got Slutsker. Slutsker bounces off Linkovich's tackle and gets down to about the 21, make that the 31 yard line. Sherman had some pressure on him early in the game, but since then the offensive line has just given Sherman all the time he needs. He does such a nice job on that play action, pulling the ball in. He gives that little head fake. He puts it into his hip, pulls it in. Old Slutsker just keeps running, doesn't he? He got an old gangly body, kind of falling around, but he just keeps working. He makes great blocks. Shaw finding more yards any way he can. Angelo Provenza, who's having a fine game at outside linebacker. Good line look there at Larry Coyer. He's been on both sides of this game. Larry Coyer's been in Iowa, Iowa State, Iowa. I was, some days he may get up and drive to work and just not know where he's going. <laughs> also coached with the New York Jets. Almost done with the quarter. Let's see if Sherman beats the quarter clock or just waits for the end of the third. He does snap it. And Shaw somehow seems to make his body get thinner just to run through a hole. It's almost like he extends himself and shoots through the gap. The Hawkeyes are driving again, holding on to an 18 to 10 lead, looking for 13 in a row. Keith, I didn't know you were going to do this for me, but is that is that a picture of South Bend, Indiana, the Golden Dome there? Dave, I know you played at Notre Dame. You snapped the ball to Joe Montana. That was the least we could do is bring you that breathtaking shot. I, a tear has come to my eye. <laughs> Wipe it up and get ready for first and ten. Come on, Dave. Suck it up. Let's go. Here we go. Tavian Banks picks up three or four. The Hawkeyes have so many weapons on that offensive team they're just they're just loaded this is a, a team that could make a run at the big conference title a lot of people aren't saying that the the football experts but i think hayden fry feels that this is a team that could make a run at the rose bowl well we're going to see a lot more of tavian banks we're going to see dwight uh, uh, coming in we're going to see some other bodies because when you have cedric shaw running the ball seven times for 76 yards in the third quarter alone they're going to give him a breather Second and seven, and Sherman is so good at the play faking. It's hard to know when he has it, when he doesn't. We should mention that the quarterbacks are doing an outstanding job. We uh, talked about it at the top of the broadcast, the key for each team. One of many keys, I suppose, is that Todd Dotson passed the ball effectively for Iowa State. He's done that, and that Matt Sherman has a productive game for Iowa, and he's certainly been the leader as we look at the third quarter statistics. And the Hawkeyes are kind of widening the gap statistically. Yeah, the one that stands out more than anything is that third down conversion. When you when you got less than 50% for Iowa State, Iowa is keeping the ball moving. Sherman with another beautiful play fake. 
And what an outstanding play by Dewan Anderson, who just cut across and almost picked that off. That looked like a touchdown in the making, and Anderson phew, right across the goal line. Well, you had Slutsker standing down in the end zone, waving his hands to, uh, to Sherman real quick, going, hey, I'm open. I've got a hole here. Get me the ball. Sherman sees him. Watch Slutsker. He's going to sit back to the left of your screen, just hanging in there. Nice job by Anderson coming across the middle and saving a touchdown. A great defense. Oh, that's close. Just a little late. So now the adventure begins. <laughs> The Hawkeyes are going to try to kick. Todd Romano. And this one is good. Snuck inside the upright. And the Hawkeyes score again to take a 21-10 lead. And they're getting closer to picking up that 13. Romano breathes a sigh of relief. Now he gets to kick off into the wind. We'll find out if he can get it as far right after this. But he can the Hawkeyes kick a field goal and take an 11-point lead. It's 21 to 10, 13:40 to play in the fourth quarter, and Romano will kick it off for Iowa. We saw him hit the crossbar with the wind behind him. Now he's going to go into the wind. That'll be a little more of a challenge. Troy Davis is one of the return men for Iowa State, and Iowa tries to keep it away from him. Nice grab. Picked up and advanced to about the 35-yard line. That was Jason Bales. That ball could have rolled a ways. Today's Norwest Bank's academic all-star is Iowa State quarterback Jeff St. Clair. Jeff is a junior majoring in physical education and physical therapy and maintains a 3.53 grade point average. Congratulations to Jeff St. Clair, today's Norwest Bank's academic all-star. And he's a great story, former walk-on that's come in and, and really played mistake-free football when the uh, Cyclones have needed it. He's the kind of guy that you can build stories around in college football with perseverance, hard work, and sticking to the books and sticking to what you believe in really make great, great, great believers of all of us in this great game. Doxson is the quarterback now. First and ten, Cyclones hoping to move the ball. They've stalled out a few times here in the third quarter. But now we're in the fourth quarter. Ball batted down. Doxson pass. Knocked out. Batted down that time by John LaFleur. This is where now we're going to see Docs, and if you don't want to start pressuring, you don't want to start pushing so hard, you want to execute correctly. We see that Iowa executed very nicely, nine plays, 39 yards, got the 31-yard field goal. Iowa State now has two touchdowns they have to score to get back into the winning side of this game. Play smart ball. Doxson looking to pass. He feels pressure in the pocket. Tries to step up in there, but only gets back to about the line of scrimmage. Well, the last couple times we've seen him pull that ball down without going to look for a receiver. It didn't even look like he was trying to get the ball downfield. He just stood back there. As soon as he got back, tucked under his arm, started running. And here's where, you know, Todd, settle back. You're the quarterback now. You're not the running back anymore. Use that as a secondary tool, not your primary tool. This is where it hurts Doxson to be playing in his first game because he's still adapting to a new offense. He's used to being a running quarterback, so sometimes instinct takes over. That ball thrown to the official. That's going to bring up a fourth down for Iowa State. So it's a quick three and out, and the Hawkeye defense really making some adjustments and doing an excellent job of just stopping the Cyclones without any momentum. This is where you're starting to see the experienced Iowa players, some of these guys who have been to bowl games last year. They, they understand what it takes to win ball games that you don't win in the first, second quarter. Goes all the way down to the fourth. Mark Harris, no pressure as he punts away. This will not go to Dwight. It's going to bounce. And down by Kevin Wilson about the 24-yard line. 12.39 to go. We've seen the Hawkeyes chew up a bunch of clock a couple of times. I'm sure what Hayden Fry would love to see is about a seven or eight minute drive that ends in a touchdown because that would all but do it in this game. Can I say hi to a couple of my old Hawkeye buddies? 
guys uh, I played with. You, do you remember a guy named Mike Stensrud? Wait, I haven't given you the yes yet. Well, see, if I if you say yes then or no, then I won't have said hi. But if I just do it. Oh, I see, I see. It's I kind of like ahead. that philosophy, if I just do it and then ask for, it's better to ask Continue your forgiveness question. than permission. <laughs> but Mike Stensrud, big mongo, played at uh, Iowa a long time ago. Sure. And Lonnie Rogers back in the dark ages. I think he wore a leather helmet. <laughs> oh, oh. Great play by Rudy Ruffalo. Number 97. And we have not had a chance today. If I'm not mistaken, that's the second time only we've called his name all day. And he's been making a lot of tackles this season, but they've done a good job. Ruffalo. Ruffalo Comes does a here. great job following the left tackle down. It gets right in his hip pocket, reads where the ball is going, and gets a tackle for a loss five yards back. Shaw's not an easy guy to bring down in the backfield. Doesn't happen very often. Second down, 15. The give to Shaw again. He gets, picks up a couple, but it's going to bring down a third and 12 for Iowa. Iowa has been superb at converting third down conversions. Well, here's where that offensive line from Iowa doesn't need to give up. I mean, you get a drive going. You get a sustained drive going. You can take you can take the Cyclones out of the game. But if you give a quick turnover here, all of a sudden Iowa State's back in this game. They get a little momentum, and this is where field position. You know, who wants to push harder at this point? Will Sherman pass on third and 12. It's an 11 point Hawkeye lead. The answer is no. Greg Schoen brings down Shaw in a hurry. The Cyclones did not bite on the play fake. And this is what you want to do on defense. Stay home. Fundamentally sound. You watch, you're going to watch everybody sit there. They got a little twist on the inside. All of a sudden, Schoen comes around to the outside, and he picks up Shaw. Shaw trying to get his 30th carry for some positive yardage. Schoen a nice tackle. Nick Gallery booms one for Iowa. Kevin Wilson looking for room. There's not much there. Picks up a couple of yards. Tackled by Matt Hughes. By the way, Gallery, the Iowa punter from Masonville, had the best average in the country last week. He averaged 59 yards a punt. The Cyclones will try to move the football when we come back. Coach Orr reflecting on his outstanding teams, marquee players, and most memorable victories. Call 1-800-764-5441. Troy Davis trying to go wide, looking to keep his balance. Shakes off another tackler and gets near a Cyclone first down. Mo that is a momentum builder. He gets knocked down to the back, keeps his momentum to the outside. Iowa's trying to force him down the line of scrimmage. You keep pushing people outside, but he never quits. He never gives up on his blockers. He never gives up on his run. There's some red shirts out there pushing people around. The Cyclones have shown they will not concede. They were down 21 to 12 to Ohio in the first game and exploded in the fourth quarter to win it easily. Ended up 36-21 as Dan McCartney got his first win and jumping off sides, Patrick Aguffa. And Aguffa is from Anchorage, Alaska. He's 6'3", 330, jumps offside. Let's check in with Rod on the Iowa State sideline. Tell you, Murph, Dan McCartney usually lets his offensive and defensive coordinators do the coaching and the pep talking when the series is done. But after the last Iowa State series, it went three and out. Dan McCartney himself came to the bench, looked at his offensive lineman in a very colorful way. Well, I'll translate it for you. He said, don't you dare quit now. I think we appreciate the translation there, Rod. The other one may have been dangerous. Second down and six. And Davis slips down. Max having a lot of trouble cutting sharply. Well, if you like running games, you're getting your eye full on both sides today. Troy Davis has been carrying the ball well today. He's at about 120 yards. Cedric Shaw for 153 yards today. So you're getting ground game, you're getting air game, you're seeing a revitalized Cyclone offense. You're seeing the Hawkeyes coming into a second game starting to pick the pace of their game up. Third down and eight. Cyclones need a first down. Hawkeyes looking to wrap up another win in the Cyhawk series. Doxon to Ed Williams. And a 
flag on the play. Comes in from behind. It was a late flag. Williams showing good hands, too. He's got the total package. We've talked about it. 88 yards in total receptions he's had today. Defensive holding. Doxon takes a snap. Reading right downfield, sets up, gets his whole body into the ball. Oh, Williams makes a nice grab outside, pulls it back in, and I didn't see the holding there. The holding was declined. The Cyclones will take the play. May have said that Williams was being held as he tried to catch the ball. Not sure, but in any event, it's a Cyclone first down. Nice conversion by Iowa State. Diaco threatens blitz. Doxon is in a world of hurt. Somehow gets out of there. Doxon is on the loose. He's all the way down to the 33-yard line. What a vanishing act by Doxon. <laughs> He's in a world of hurt. He's now sitting in a high chair. You got Iowa coming through and just runs right over the Bickerman, runs right over the top of the center, chases Doxon out of the pocket. He's caught two, three different times. Look at him. You can't catch this kid. Like trying to rope the win. First and ten. Oh, you practiced that one, Keith. That's not fair. You had that one written down. I'm looking at my hand right now. That's, that's not nice. The ink was starting to smear. This time, Doxon stays in a world of hurt. Lloyd Bickham. That was the Peter McNeely cocoon of horror. <laughs> hey, you got to throw a towel in first there, big man. You just can't come rushing into the ring like that. That's right, and I have no right even mentioning Peter McNeely's name after the first minute of the ball game. I'll tell you, the last play, Bickman comes in there and forces Doxon out. This time he says, no, I'm not letting go this time. Six foot three, 265 pound junior. He's really coming on for Iowa right now. Second down and 17. No, no, Doxon no, no. looking for Williams again. He was open for just a brief moment. May have been a mix up on the play and Williams is grabbing his leg. He's limping. It looks like he's coming off. Earlier in the game, See, that could be a potential hamstring or a calf muscle. Let's watch Williams. He comes off the ball, makes his cut to the inside, plays the defender off nicely. He's going, throw me the ball now. Oh, and he pulls up short. He kind of moves his leg there a little bit at the end. Third and 17. Doxon. Intercepted. Damian Robinson. Still going, Cone hits him hard, but Robinson shakes it off. Now he reverses his field, <laughs> finally concedes defeat at the 31-yard line. I've nice seen, play. I've seen rugby games where you don't have this much moving and run around on the field. Oh, man. We've got flag down in the secondary. We've got a flag down at the original line of scrimmage. I may throw one out there. we just got a met. Well, throw the white towel out here, Peter McNeely. <laughs> They may have to talk a while to straighten all this out. Here we go. We've got a holding call. Dick Honig giving us the signal, referee today. Well, that's a big turnover for the Cyclones. Had a little bit of momentum after the Doxon run. Iowa State has turned it over twice today. They came in with a 5-1 to one ratio, but... Doxon makes his first mistake. Watch the pass. The ball's thrown out over the middle. He puts it right down the middle. The problem is the receiver's turned around about six yards in front of it. Robinson picks the ball off, heads down his sideline. Oh, gets popped a nice hit. Stays up. Hey, an offensive lineman do doesn't know how to use his hands, so he doesn't wrap him up. You know, he would never hold. And Robinson just keeps running around for a couple more moments. That was Tim Cohn out there, number 77, putting a hit on Robinson to help bring him down earlier. First and 10, ball on the 21 for Iowa. This is Shaw adding to the statistics. Nice cut, and he picks up about seven, and we have another flag. That's Freedon on the tackle. 
One thing both coaches also told us yesterday, Keith, was is that they don't want to play sloppy football. They want it to play crisp. And the penalties now are starting to come out at the crucial time of the game for both sides. You know, the second half has moved pretty fast. We're down to about 7.27 to go in the ball game. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. There's a break for Iowa State. The Cyclones really need to hold them here in a couple of plays, get the ball right back, and, and put a score on the board as the, the time is winding down. Big plays are, are going to play a factor if Iowa State is going to get back here. They need 12 points. Legendary coach Hayden Fries, 13-3 and three against Iowa State. First and 15. It's Shaw again, and Shaw bounces off a tackle. He's got some room. He's up near a first down. Second, third effort. That's a, that's a great run. That's a six foot one, 195 pound back coming right up the middle, right up the gut. There's nothing fancy about this. He's got one lead blocker. He gets hit by one, two, three, four bodies on top of him, and he just doesn't stop. Him. Legs driving forward the whole time. And you see Matt straight. He, Keith, he puts his shoulder down at the end. He knows he's going to get tackled, but he puts his shoulder down, drives his knees through, and he gets two more yards at the very end. He doesn't fumble. 173 yards. What a day for both backs. Most of Davis's yards were on that one carry, and Shaw picks up the first down. And I think I'm catching on to the game plan here in the fourth quarter. Give it to Shaw. We're going to keep the ball on the ground. We're going to keep the clock moving. We're going to try to keep our guys from jumping off sides, creating penalties, and get on the bus. And a bad sign for Iowa State is Matt Strait keeps making tackle after tackle. Mike Linkovich in on some tackles. You don't want your defensive secondary making the tackles. Matt Strait has been all over this field today. First down and 10. Iowa trying to... Put a game-sealing drive together with six minutes left to play in the ball game. It's 21 to 10, Hawkeyes. The give to Feimer, and Feimer ripples up to the 40, to the 50, shakes off the tackler, he's down to the 30, the 25, still going. Rodney Feimer. Big run. You hear the Hawkeye crowd giving it some cheers. You got a linebacker blitzing up. You got a second linebacker blitzing up. You got a safety guy coming up. There's nobody on that second tier defense until you get to the secondary. And when you've got your wide receivers knocking people down like number 10, all Filer had was a couple of little guys way downfield to bring him down. Filer also was one of the eight Hawkeyes last week. It was their first start. They've got some weapons, don't they? The Hawkeyes loaded up on offense. This is Tavian Banks. He shakes off a tackler. He's down to about the 11-yard line. Tim Sanders helps bring him down. And that's the thing that impresses me so much about these Hawkeye backs. They all keep going, keep driving the legs forward. Second, third effort, gain so many yards. There's really not a back on this field today that goes down on the initial hit. Second five, and there are Cyclone fans heading for the exits. Up five minutes to play. Iowa State must keep Iowa out of the end zone to stay in this ball game. It's Banks. Banks makes a move. He's near the five. Let's go down to Mark Harmon. I imagine the mood there has changed a little bit since we talked to you last. That's right. They uh, are getting a little bit better, but still not out of the woods yet. And uh, you may be noticing a few of the players are slipping on this AstroTurf. And as it was explained to me, once the sun comes out, that's the AstroTurf's worst enemy. And what you end up getting, you end up getting the asphalt getting hit hotter and that very thin pad, which has basically been crushed to death over the last few years, becomes like the billiard effect. And uh, players start sliding a little bit more on this uh, rather shabby AstroTurf. Thank you, Mark. We've seen Cedric Shaw and Tavian Banks stay on their feet enough to score, and Banks is close again. He already has one touchdown, and again, straight who stops him. The Hawkeyes are going to try to all but put number 13 in the books here. 13 straight win, that is. They third down, goal to go. 
check that. It'd be second down goal to go. Dan McCartney said he only had eight seniors of this entire Iowa State squad. There's going to be a lot of young kids who remember this game. Oh, Rodney Filer is piled up at the side at the uh, goal line. Angelo Provenza with another big play. When we call his name, it's in the backfield. And Angelo Provenza, the first half, had three plays that were 16 yards in losses. He was all over the place. He just puts his head down and says, I'm coming. So I'm not stopping. It comes right through underneath, and he, he does it the hard way. He gets right under Filer. That was a great, great tackle. Last week against TCU, when the game had been decided, the Cyclones made a goal line stand. Maybe they can use that to their advantage now. We'll be back with third and two. Today we get to choose the top defensive player of the day, DuPont Reliance STS, the seed, the herbicide, the system. The top defensive player of the day, we have co-defensive players of the day. Number 66, Lloyd Bickham, and number 34, Angelo Provenza for the Cyclones. Third and two, the get to Banks near the goal line, but he doesn't quite get in. It's going to bring them fourth down and goal. The Cyclones talked so much last week about stopping TCO on one final drive for a touchdown. Are they having some memories of that now? One close. We've seen the uh, Iowa kicker miss a couple today. What's the point of going for the field goal? You may as well push it down across the top. It's fourth down and goal to go. About six inches for the touchdown. And you bring out the big stud. Bring out Shaw. He's coming. We're going to fly him right over the top. Sherman calls a timeout. Going to talk about it. No, we got the wrong people on the field now. Well, Matt Sherman has played an outstanding game for Iowa. This is everything you want in a quarterback. This guy has poise. He's got the gun. Uh, he's got the vision on the field. It looks like he's a good leader. And he's a he's, sophomore. And he's a sophomore. He's That's a, a nice sophomore. Day. You could look forward to the rest of this year and two more years with this young man directing the team. 6'3", 207. He's got the size. Hayden Fry is really high on him. He's, he's talked about what a great quarterback he can be. We mentioned that Chuck Long, who was an outstanding quarterback, runner-up to the Heisman Trophy winner to Bo Jackson when he was quarterback at Iowa, is now the defensive secondary coach for the Hawkeyes. Yeah, we made a comment yesterday. At, well, coach, does uh, you know does Chuck ever go over and talk to the quarterbacks? He goes, absolutely not. He said he's a defensive backfield coach. And we just stood there, and he goes, however, the quarterbacks have been known to go over and talk to Chuck every once in a while. That so, just shows you you got a brainy quarterback hey, there. You want to, hey. you got a chance to talk to Chuck Long. I you want to pick his brain. I want to drink water. I go to the well. Fourth down and goal to go. It's a play fake. Sherman is on the outside. He makes. Sherman thought about passing it, took it on in himself. He can run too. And that's going to about do it for the Hawkeyes to take a 27 to 10 lead. What an impressive offensive machine Iowa has. Now Sherman's hardest part of explaining this play is Shaw's going to come back and go, you know, I really was open on that play. <laughs> you you could have thrown it to me if you wanted to. That's great. That's a great offensive play. You've got options all the way to the goal line. You can throw the ball. You can run it. You've got options every step of the way. No need to get that ball airborne if you know you can take it in by land. Todd Romano for the extra point. And it's no good. When this game is over, you may see the Iowa kickers stay on the field and practice till midnight. Man, that's uh, Romano. I mean, you could probably get out there. They're going to start looking for some new cheese pretty quick here. You're going to get some <laughs> mozzarella or some Parmesan to get a new kicker in here pretty quick. Bless his heart. <laughs> Man, Clear Ryan Sherman. Early and Romano have struggled a little bit right with there. the kicking game. And, and you know what? Look at Shaw. He sees his quarterback's not going to get in the ball, and you know what he does? He gives him that little extra block and that extra. That is the best example of teamwork you could ask for. That was a great. That was a great photo, and a great camera work by the crew all day long today. You betcha. And Sherman, that that moment he put the ball up, just a little pump, that was enough to give him the time he needed to get in the end yep. zone. He's going to go to 4-0 as a starter. That's a pretty good record. Took over for Ryan Driscoll last year when Driscoll 
got hurt. The Hawkeyes kind of played musical quarterbacks last season, a lot of injuries. It's 27 to 10, and I'll bet one thing Hayden Fry will talk about when this is over is we sure are fortunate the game wasn't closer at the very end with the kicking game, because that's something that'll jump up and bite you when you're playing a, a Penn State or an Ohio State or one of the tough teams in the Big Ten Conference. Vermont Nick Gallery also off. has his first punt block last week against Northern Iowa, so you got some protections to still work on, some kicking to work on. Romano kicks it away from Troy Davis again. Kevin Wilson will run it up for the Cyclones. He could have got by that one guy. He had some room, but uh, the one guy did not turn him loose. And that one guy was Jason House. It's a great thing about defense or, or special teams. All you have to do is have one person make a great play, and everybody looks good. Hawkeyes accomplished exactly what they wanted to. Nine plays, 79 yards, four minutes and 41 seconds off the clock. Sherman runs it in, and now Iowa State will probably work on the passing game. Doxson. He's looking for Ed Williams. Williams up near the 50-yard line. And I don't know how Williams is still open because Doxson is looking for him and only him when he's on a pass pattern. He, he looks good on his route. He looks good when he catches the ball. This is a nice-looking athletic receiver. You see him coming off the ball. He turns in. He's running sharp. He's crisp. And he's looking for stuff down the field. He's so smooth on that pass route. The draw play to Davis. Davis busts out of there. He's got a little room. Legs still turning all the way down near the 30. The Cyclones are not giving up. Hey, you never quit in these games. You never, ever stop because you never know what's going to happen until I start to warm up to sing. <laughs> Two years ago, the Cyclones were down by... Up three touchdowns in this game and exploded in the fourth quarter. Actually recovered an onside kick with about a minute to play, but then fumbled the ball away on what would have been a chance to win it. Oh, Doxon puts a nice move. All the way down to the 16-yard line, and the Cyclones are driving. Oh, he gave, he gave the defender that little kind of limp leg back to the inside, which gave him just enough time to cut outside. Looked like Bobby Diaco was out there. Watch him break out to the far left. He's a tough guy to prepare for. Especially when they haven't seen him for the last couple weeks. <laughs> that's, that's right. He's, he's impressed me with his passing today. I think we all knew that Todd Doxson could run, but when he stayed in the pocket and not rushed out of the pocket thinking run, he's delivered some nice spirals. He's had some nice balls. Across the middle again. Williams buttons the handle. And he's down to the 10. I was going to say, hey, he's mortal after all, but then Williams gets it on the rebound. Gary Cooks with the tackle, but how about this Ed Williams? You know, coming in, you don't hear a whole lot about this guy, but he's made a name for himself in the state of Iowa this afternoon. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's kind of interesting here. You make this round a little more exciting than it has to be. It's just a slant to the inside. One, two. Oop, now I got it. If you catch it and move the ball forward, it goes a little better. But unfortunately, we had some extracurricular activity back inside as we listened to the head official here. Push in the back, above the waist, on the offense, from the end of the run, still first down. You know you're working with a good crew when that kind of play happens and you get an isolated picture of the guy bobbling the ball. That doesn't happen by accident. We got a game plan here, too, so they're doing a great job out in the truck. That, that was an interesting call. You're not backing that one? I, that was an interesting call. At interesting. the end of, a, end of a ball game like this, that's an interesting call. 27-10. Iowa leads it first down, and now oh. we have more flags. Unfortunately, Doxon picked his head up to start shouting something out to one of the receivers, and he obviously had a quick count on because you got the left side of the line. Thought he made the snap call. The offense, five yards, still first down. And it took off. Well, it's still first down. That's the good news for the Cyclones. The bad news is the clock continues to expire. Inside of two minutes now. And Iowa State has made a few costly mental errors. Doxon looking for Hirachik. Oh, almost 
almost there in a super play by Damian Robinson. Ball hung up just a little long. Some of the crowd calling for interference. Mike Horacek is down the field. He's going, look, I've got a right to turn around. I got the ball. There's a little, gra oh, there's a little grab with a jersey. Oh, look at that shot. I'm going to call that interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that's an interesting, that's an interesting non-call. Minute 45 to play. Jackson drops back again, steps up in the pocket, delivers the ball behind Williams. Broken up by Ed Gibson from Davenport. That's how Todd Doxson was just looking for Williams as soon as he came off the line, made his cut across, was going to try to get the ball into his hands. And when he started moving out of the pocket, he couldn't thread it as he wished. I think this offense is going to be a good fit for Doxson once he fully adjusts to it. Or he still has a little bit of tendency to follow his instincts of the last couple of years and step up in that pocket, but... He's delivered some good footballs. He's thrown some nice passes, like that one. Whoa. Derek Bivens takes it in the ribs hard. Ed Gibson puts the hit on him. Sophomore out of Davenport, Assumption High School. Brings up a fourth down. No sense in kicking a field goal when you're down 17. Yeah, there's, there's no fourth downs here. You knew you had every play all the way through. Dotson to the corner for Horacek, and again, the crowd thinks Horacek is being held up on his pattern. I'd, I'd like to see Horacek finish that pattern out, though. Keep running. You don't stop and turn back toward the ball. The Cyclones turn it over. Great effort by Iowa State, but they just they met up with a better football team on this day. Iowa is going to beat a lot of people this season. This is a very good Hawkeye team. This is the kind of intensity you also need to interject interest in this rivalry where you've got some competitive play, where you've got the players that you know Iowa State is now going to start rising up. Iowa also starts getting back in the Rose Bowl picture, which is where they want to be. Aiden Fry thinks he has a team that can make a run for the Roses. We've seen nothing here today to disagree with that. Ryan Driscoll is the quarterback. He takes over for Sherman, not going to risk a late injury to Sherman when you're up 17 and there's a minute to play. The Cyclones led in this game. The Cyclones played well in the first half. They have a great effort throughout, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like we touched on even before the game started. Everything was going to have to go Iowa State's way for the Cyclones to beat what at this time is a more talented football team. But a lot of things to build upon at this university now. Building the new athletic facilities, you've got renewed interest, you have the fan interest, you have a coach who's spending time across the state. He's spending time on campus. He's spending time in the community making sure that people know Iowa State is here. We are not going to sit back to anybody in this state. Iowa is going to move to 2-0 and on the very young season. The Cyclones will fall to 1-2 and with UNLV coming into Ames next weekend for what should be a good game. A running Rebs against the Cyclones. Second three. Second three. Clock winding down inside of a minute to play. Driscoll is now the quarterback. And Banks will get his few carries. Banks is a guy that would start for most colleges in the country, but he has the misfortune of being behind a, just a great running back. I can't say enough about Cedric Shaw. He's very impressive today. This has been an enjoyable game from the standpoint that you have great running backs. You've got two quarterbacks who can throw the ball. We discovered a real sleeper now, and Mr. Williams for Iowa State catching the ball. Nice young receiver. You see the sidelines from Iowa State, they are not happy with today's outcome, as they should be. And you know, it's been a good ball game. We didn't have to break out any of those uh, Joe Montana stories from your days at Notre Dame. So that's also a gauge we can go by. Who? <laughs> you know, the, the guy who took snaps from Dave Huffman. That's the way they used to describe him, I think. You know, you know if I'd known he was going to be that famous, I'd have been a lot nicer to him. 
and gotten a few autographs. Have it. him sign some stuff. Rodney Filer smacking pads with about 40 seconds to play. He's still running hard. Mike Linkovich in on another hit. Well, Cedric Shaw has piled up the big yards, but Rodney Filer's had a day, too. There's Lloyd Bickham. Hey, how you doing? Co-defensive player of the game. Filer also 113 yards in the day today, so we got some powerful offense out of the Hawkeyes. 200-yard rushers. We said they had a lot of weapons. Sherman's had a big day, too. Not a big day from Tim Dwight. Dwight will have his days, no question about that. Wind it down on another Iowa-Iowa State football game. It was a clean game, no fighting, no ugly, unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. You sometimes have that. Ugly have announcing. Two rivals. Yeah, there was some ugly announcing, but we played hard. We tried hard. One of the, one of the things that is so nice about this is that Hayden Fry spends time with, with the coaches. So much was made of this past week of these two, the time they had spent together, player-coach relationship, coach-coach relationship. McCartney trying to be a gentleman at this point, but obviously very disappointed, thinking that he's got the talent and capability to build upon. Works hard, hustle hard, knows so many of these players. This is some of the hardest running that a back will do all day, getting through this sea of photographers for the midfield handshake between Fry and McCartney, but it does look like he broke loose. He, he got out. <clears throat> so McCartney walking off the field. Hayden Fry. Just, he is. He's, he's, he's one of the most respected coaches in the country. He's well thought of. He's got the wins to back it up as he climbs up the ladder toward his inevitable success also. He has a darn good football team leaving in a swarm. Same way they came on the field. The Hawkeyes win it 27-10. We'll be back to Cyclone Stadium right after this.